Either that was great timing. Oh, it was great timing. <laughs> I was gonna say, it was either that or I forgot to start the music. But hey, I'm glad it's good timing. What's going on, everyone? We're doing some C++ tonight, doing a little bit of centipede programming, returning to that, of course. Um, what I've got so far is I've got three critters on screen and most of the functionality of where I want it to be. And tonight, tonight we're programming one long boy. <laughs> we're programming the centipede tonight, or at least... Just the centipede head. Hey, if we have time tonight, we might even start on the body, which would be well ahead of schedule. But, where's my window? I think I'm using a window called test. Yeah, this is the test window. My scene is called test, because I thought I had... Hi, everyone. <laughs> my name's Textport Sparky, and I forgot to do my intro. <laughs> this is centipede. Uh, we've been working on this a little bit. I've only actually done one stream of it, but for that one stream I explained mostly what was going on with the game so far. Um, off stream I've worked on adding critters to the game and some shooting, some capability here and there. Uh, that's, let me actually start up, just to get an idea of that. I have a bunch of like extra windows that I have open that I might need to mess around with how this layout looks, but we'll work on that later. For now, let me actually make sure the game starts up okay, and it all works for the stream. Um, we have a bunch of spawners that I'm now enabling. I have them disabled just for testing. Temporarily just for testing. The return! I've returned like once, but it was only an hour stream, so I'm okay with counting this as the return. What's going on, Gavin? I have been so busy, so busy in fact, with school and work, that this stream is literally just school work. <laughs> It's gonna be an all-nighter too, because I was so far behind on doing my programming homework that I'm now just gonna be doing an all-nighter and then have to wake up for work tomorrow. So I'm not waking up for work tomorrow, I'm just skipping it. Skipping sleep, we don't need sleep. We got coffee. I missed the return, it was only like an hour. And it was like gauging whether I could do this okay. Uh, making sure I could hide all my information for Visual Studio and stuff like that. Um, let me also make sure this captures okay, because this might not even capture all right. Does this automatically come through the window? It does! Look at that! Look at that! We're also gonna get killed because I... There we go. <laughs> uh, let me restart. But welcome, Gavin. Good to see ya. Good to see ya, as always. Um, we're working on a little game called Centipede, where uh, there's a couple critters on screen right now. Um, this is Reminiscence, or almost the exact same version as the... Um, uh, IGN Centipede version. If you Google Centipede IGN, you can find something that looks like this. We're trying to recreate that as close as we can. So we got spider boys hopping around. The, uh, the timer for the spiders we're gonna adjust later, so you might notice that they're coming around on screen a lot. Totally fine. Um, it's sort of just a variable amount right now. Later on we're gonna read in certain wave information that determines, hey, when should we spawn a spider? When should we spawn a scorpion? Um, we got the scorpion poison mushrooms working now, which is really exciting. I was trying to get that working previously. Um, they also take damage just like the regular little mushrooms. Mostly just a sprite swap, but it does have a couple internals that actually dictate what that poison mushroom means. And we're gonna be using that for our centipede head, because we need to poison the centipede. The centipede is the boy that's way up there at the top, right? Who's just moving back and forth. He's not hes not flipping or anything like that. He's just going left and right right now. Um, he's having a good old time up there. Something else that's kind of on my to-do list is right now the only time the flea spawns, which is this guy that's fallen down from the roof, is when there's a mushroom that's destroyed in the player field. And the player field is this box that we're bounded within. And right now, we only have one mushroom left in the player field just because we've already killed most of them. So here's that last one, and if I kill him now, we have zero mushrooms remaining in the mushroom field, meaning that there can be no more fleas that spawn. So I need another mechanism that also says, hey, if this happens, see if you can spawn a flea. See if there's enough mushrooms in the player area, because that's the only sort of trigger we have right now. Um, I was just gonna say the uh, centipede is moving underneath the mushrooms, but that's okay, because he's gonna be colliding with the mushrooms, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I want to shoot the scorpion make sure that's working. Okay, hey scorpion. Okay, cool. Let's get started. So the thing I'm working on today is called the centipede head. Um, I already created a header and an implementation file for that. Um, later on we're going to be working on factories and object pools. Um, currently I actually have that for... Is that through to stream alright? I gotta keep testing. Yeah, okay. Uh, so currently I have three different enemies. 
Got all this stuff here. I have three different enemies. The centipede, the flea, the scorpion, and the spider. Not counting the centipede because we're just starting on him. Hey, Sherlock, how's it going? Uh, welcome, welcome, good to see ya. We're recreating the centipede. <laughs> <laughs> Which is for a school project, so it's not uh, not my own choice, but it's a lot of fun nonetheless. Uh, so for the flea, for example, we have a flea factory that we can send information to. Hey, we want a small flea. Make a generic one and give me a give me a pointer to it. Um, and an object pool. So anytime we kill a flea, it doesn't actually delete it off memory. It sort of recycles it, puts it in a recycle bin, and then later on we're like, hey, we want another flea. Pick it off the recycle bin and throw it into the game. Which is fantastic for performance, because then we're not calling new and delete constantly, and we're not, you know, writing new memory. Uh, so, that's Flea, that's Scorpion, that's Spider. Centipede is the one we're starting on. To start off with, I'm gonna not do an object pool or anything like that. Um, I think that complicates things very quickly. I just want to get the functionality down first, and then we can transfer it over to an object pool fairly easily. In my opinion. Hopefully. <laughs> So let's get started on that. Um, right now we of course have the centipede head spawning, which is something I did before the stream and then I realized, you know, this would be actually kind of something fun to stream. Um, so he's up there right now, there's no collision detection or anything like that. Literally it's checking the bounding from left to right and saying, hey, if it goes past the bounding, send it the other way using a, um, an integer and a negative offset. Oh, that's right! Music can be turned down! Thank you, actually, thank you for reminding me. I forgot I was actually going to change the music too, so thanks for the reminder on that. Uh, what was I going to change it to, though? I was going to change it to... Was it Donkey Kong Country? I guess Donkey Kong Country. I don't think that was my original intention, but we're going to switch it over anyway. Donkey Kong Country music. Is that what I was going to use? I swear I had something else planned, but I didn't, like, open it on YouTube to have it readied up, you know? That was a bad idea. Oh, well. We'll use Donkey Kong Country. It's still catchy. And we'll do it at half volume. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> because usually I turn it up all the way before the stream, and then turn it down once I get started, but I forgot about that this time. <laughs> Actually, it still might be a little too loud. Oh, now YouTube froze. Oh, awesome. <laughs> there we go. All right. Hush for half a second while we refresh YouTube so the video player wakes up. I guess there's a downside of starting up an hour-long video. It also doesn't want to refresh. New PC, by the way. We have a new desktop. Can I... I think I can turn my screen around. Do I have incriminating information on top of my desk? Not really. I'm gonna flip this hat around. <laughs> Other than that, let me take this camera here. We're going for a magical ride to see... I got a new desktop! Which is super hard to see. Look at that ratio. There we go. <laughs> Terrible. It's also getting chroma keyed and all that fun stuff. It's excellent. Anyway, um, we got a new desktop, which is going to be great for actually streaming. Um, coming up here soon. <laughs> Once we actually have time to stream, if we ever do. Um, is that off? Let's pull that off. Uh, there we go. Which I'm excited for Cyberpunk, because now I can actually play Cyberpunk. That's the one thing I was really... One of the determining factors for actually picking it up. Okay, okay, okay. Back to programming. So, right now, what do we got? We have a header file, so right now I'm working on... I have a bunch of... The professor doesn't like magic numbers at all, which I can completely understand, but to the degree where if you even have something like... You have the width of an object, say the sprite for example, if I divide that by two, just to get half of the width to get to the center points, that's a magic number technically, so I gotta use that in a variable. So, we're gonna have just a splash of variables everywhere. At some point, I'd like to actually take some of these variables and put in like a generic, I think class or maybe struct, struct would be public, so generic struct that I could just reference or pass. That might be a lot easier because I'm using stuff like the size of the tile, a tile offset for the specific objects, the number of columns that I'm using, the number of rows that are referenced. I'm using the same variables over and over and over again. Um, and I guess the whole idea of having a robust code base is if I change it in one location, it should populate everywhere else. Right now I kind of have it in each header file, so it's it's almost there, but it's still adjusting like 15 different files if I want to change something like the tile offset. So at some point I'll have to change that, that's on my to-do list. Uh, currently I'm working on the movement, so we have an update loop um, where we update the sprites, we set the position, 
at whatever position we want it to be at, which I'm actually going to switch these to. And we call a function called move, and move is where all that magic's going to happen. Now there are a lot of different things that go on when the centipede moves around on the screen. First off, it bounds left to right, which is super easy. Um, hits the left side of the screen or the right side, it drops down a row, and it continues dropping down the row until it gets to the play area. Um, if that mushroom were, or if that centipede were to happen to run into a mushroom, then it will drop down a row early. Uh, and if the centipede gets all the way to the very bottom box where the player area is, to the very bottom row, it will loop backwards up. It will loop back up. Uh, within the player area, and then it will sort of move just within this small region. Uh, you have never played Centipede? I recommend it! Actually, let me get a link to the version that we're running. So the version we're trying to um, emulate as close as possible is this IGN version. Right now I have sound disabled. Right now I don't have sound implemented, because I don't want to implement sound. And the professor is okay with that, because he says he has heard the same exact sound billions of times and he gets tired of hearing the noise all the time. <laughs> so that's going to be one of the last things we implement. Not worried about it now. In the meantime, we're going to listen to a little bit of Donkey Kong. So right now we don't want to... Use a paint file. I guess I could connect. Paint.net. I guess it's probably going to be the best. And window capture the paint.net window. Oh, there's my start window. Paint on it. And bound it to this little tiny box. Pre-bounding. There we go. <laughs> Good old paint on that. I love paint on that. I really do. It's all I ever need and more. So right now we have a bunch of grids. A bunch of good old grids. Let's just make some really cheap grids. Oh no, it's offset. See, now y'all are gonna judge me on my perfection, which is so far from perfection. It's gonna look terrible. Look at these lines. <laughs> you know what would be a lot easier is copying and pasting it down, but we're we gonna do the things the right way? No, we're not. I'll do this. Oh, I just realized I also can't zoom in, can I? Because I probably screwed up the window. Oh, it did! No! <laughs> Here, we'll do this. Oh, you know what I already have? I already have a reference. What am I even doing? We're gonna open... Uh, where's my reference? This one. That makes things a lot easier. <laughs> it's so wrong, it's so right. <laughs> Who says we have to do things the right way? We don't have to do things the right way. So right now, the centipede is moving along. Let me get this window open. The centipede's moving along. Say he's at... I need a color. A color wheel. There it is. Say he's within a specific box. Say this box right here. And then we want to move to the right to this next box. Right over here. This is sort of a tile-based system that we're working off of. Ignore that it's an offset box. and Ignore that it doesn't look right. It's okay. Um... Anytime we're in the left box, we need to be able to determine whether we're going to be moving to the right box if that box is clear, if there's a mushroom in it, or if it's outside the range of our scope. I will never ignore it, you're going to have to. <laughs> it's either you're going to ignore it, or it's going to be there for the rest of the stream. I will take a picture of it and put it there, and it will be there for the rest of the stream. <laughs> uh, we essentially want to move over here. A drawing pad would be real nice. Look at this arrow. <laughs> I want to move from the left box to the right box. Um, we have to be able to determine while we're moving through this left box, doing little tiny increments, whether that right box is free or not. But every single update loop, we don't want to check that. We want to only check within a certain amount of um, times. Say after 8 frames, for example, we want to double check, hey, is the box that's next to me free? It takes about 8 frames of, to move from one box to another because we're moving about 2 pixels per second for a range of 16 for each tile. Um, this being the tile. Smiley face. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have there we go. So, that's what we're working on now. And that's why within this window, let me hide paint on that here for a sec. Oh, window management. I would love a third monitor, or a second monitor. I have one right now. 
I miss having two. Anyways, that's why within here we have a current frame is equal, if it's equal to eight, then we're gonna do something, set it back to zero and do some checks. Um, we only ever really need to double check whenever, <clears throat> whenever we're within a tile. So right now we're determining on this first bit whether we're at the edge of the screen or not. Um, if the position of the centipede is within the left screen or right screen bounds, which are defined as the window heights width, subtracting the sprite width, and just the left side. You're on my second monitor, does that count? Kinda! I guess it kinda counts, right? Can I take my windows and put it on your right monitor? Would that work? <laughs> uh. Um, right now, if we hit the bounding, so if we hit the two bounding windows, we're switching directions. So, you know, move left to right, move right to left. I would now like to determine if there is a mushroom within this area. So, I guess we could do that as an else if. And we're going to query our grid. That's what we're going to have to do. Um, to query the grid, we're going to have to do it based off our position. But we already have a function within our grid querying system to determine whether, um, to, to sort of break it down into columns and rows. Let me just hook up my HDMI and plug it to the stream. Perfect! Perfect! Let me know when it's all ready to go and I'll have the, the magic red button. Where's that magic red button? Oh, I can't find the button. Try luck. <laughs> um, else if, and we're gonna do something. Here I'd like to check if there's a mushroom. So, I just remember all my functions. What we need first before we do any of this is we need a reference to our mushroom field, which is something I believe I was setting up. Centipede head does not have a reference to the mushroom field. We do have a for declaration for our class. So before we forget, be sure to include that. Include mushroom field. Mushroom field. And I also need to include teal. Ah elements. Oh no? Oh no! <laughs> um, okay, now we're gonna have a reference to... Oh god, he's no. What's my usual scaling? Uh, 191. Okay, that looks fine. Is that readable? No. Let's make it a little zoomed in just for the stream. There we go. That's more legible. Uh, we're gonna have a reference to the mushroom field. We're gonna call it just field it easy. And anytime we create a centipede head, we need to assign this field. So that'll be when we create it specifically. This gets into the question of when do we create the centipede, because we need to be able to pass the field information to the centipede. I imagine we're gonna create it... it's gonna be created at level creation. I feel like we need to do this in some sort of game controller. For the time being, though, let's just do this as, uh, we're passing the information over. Actually, we can do this directly within level 1. Because we create a field, player 1 mushroom field, um, thinking ahead, thinking we might have two fields. This is gonna get tricky when we have two players. Because right now we're, like, initiating all of these, you know, different factories to be able to... The factories might be okay. God, it's saving that information. Player 2 mode's gonna be very difficult, in my opinion. Because player 2 is exactly the same as player 1, but essentially you're creating like another instance. And we can't rely on like two different threads to play the same game, unfortunately. So... Within the initializer for the centipede head, I'm gonna pass the mushroom field for now. Later on when we actually create the factory, we might have a reference. Yeah, that would be how we'd want to go about it. It's when we have a factory, sort of like the flea for example. When do we actually provide the mushroom field? Not within the flea itself, but when we assign it via the factory. Right? We initialize it with its position within the, uh, the matrix. Field. Oh, we call it set mushroom field method. <laughs> What's with all the- whose family guy emotes are these? Shift. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a kappa for that. Oh no, my kappa didn't work! Three Ps. 
Wrong. <laughs> so we call Set Mushroom Field. <clears throat> or Set Field. Within the fleet. That is done when? That is done after we call it within the mushroom field itself. Oh, right, now I remember. Okay. So within the mushroom field, the mushroom field is actually in charge of spawning the flea because it has most of the flea information about the player shrooms and all that, so within mushroom field.cpp. Set field. Whenever we create a flea, we set the field. So it's gonna be the case where whenever we create the centipede, we need to set the field. It's just the question of when that is done. I suppose we could do that directly within level one. That's what we're probably gonna do. So let's not worry about using this as a, an initializer or a constructor. An argument to the constructor. Instead, we'll have a, a method. So void set field mushroom field pointer the field. And let's go ahead and write the method for this. <clears throat> this will be. Oh, centipede head. Set field. And we'll say field is equal to the field. Cool. And we'll call that later on. Sorry I'm not staying for long, I might be back later if you're still live. Sounds good, no worries, Sherlock. Thanks for hanging out. It's good to see you for sure. I haven't seen you in a while, so it's awesome to see you. I hope you have a, a good one if I don't see you later. Hopefully we do get a chance to stream more often, but we'll see. So, okay, we're setting the mushroom field properly. That's good. I swear, this green screen is getting worse and worse. I'm worried it's gonna fall. This video can't, like... I feel like I should hang it up. Just to make sure the longevity of it is longer. Good luck with your project! Thank you! I appreciate that! I hope my project goes well, too. I'm very worried about it. <laughs> I got my fingers crossed. Okay, so we have the field set. So now we can assume that this is okay to go along with. So... Else... Oh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Else if, um, oh, we gotta query the field now, so field, stay hydrated, don't you worry, <laughs> I got a big old jug of water, I will, right now I'm drinking coffee though, so I guess that's dehydrating, but thank you nonetheless, uh, we're going to get a mushroom, get mushroom, which is a method that we have, and we can provide either an integer and a column, or a vector. So in this case, we're going to provide a vector, which is just the POS. And it doesn't like that because... why is that? Uh, no suitable conversion from vector 2f to int exists. Let me make sure that get mushroom field is the right one. Within the mushroom field, we have a method called... Get mushroom. I thought I had a vector one. Oh, a spawn mushroom! In. Okay, so we're also going to create a new method within the mushroom field called mushroom pointer as a return. Get mushroom, which in, you provide an SF vector 2F QS. A vector of two values, X and Y, position. Okay, let's go ahead and provide the implementation for this as well. Get mushroom. Okay. This is of mushroom field space. And we're gonna do something similar to here. <clears throat> I'm speci specifically column checking in this instance, uh, just because it's. A I ran into a weird bug earlier, so this actually might not be needed. This is definitely not needed anymore. Um, where I was having instances where the column was not. Uh, I think I was getting garbage data. So essentially, I was, it's like running in release where. You know, you're given a space, a block of memory, and I'm not initializing it all to be null pointer. So I'm kind of getting whatever's at that location in the first place, um, checking if it's null pointer, and since it's garbage data, it's technically not null pointer, so I was running into trouble here, so I had to actually specifically check for that. I think I'm now good to go with that, because we initialize our, uh, our 2D array to be nullified, I think, on entry. I think that's what this refers to. The the braces and the zero nulls what you're creating, I think. I don't remember. I wish I could check on that. I was trying to read around to see if that was specifically what I wanted. Um, I was finding a lot of resources for Java, but I couldn't find a lot on C++ specifically. So I was having trouble with that. Anyways. So we're going to be doing something similar here. I think just in this case we can return 
what's that? Mushy Tile? Mushy Tile is my 2D array name. Column row. I hope we can just do this. Um, but, right, we need to convert first. So, I'm just gonna copy and paste my code from somewhere else where we determine the integer row and column. This. Position x divided by tile size. I feel like I need an offset still, though, because it's still corresponding to a tile offset. For now, we're gonna be okay, but possibly need to add tiles offset. We're gonna check a bunch of times um, whether the second that centipede head touches the mushroom, if it's detecting it right away or if it's slightly off. That's what's gonna be important to us. Uh, in this case, just return mushy tile. Mushy tile is not defined within the right name space. Oh, <laughs> capitalization. Mushy tile, upper camel case. Okay, cool. That get method works now, so back to the centipede head. Field by get mushroom, just beside the, provide the POS. Um, that's all it essentially needs. And then let the mushroom field do with all the calculation, which column it's in and whatnot. Uh, they'll make things easier. Okay, so in the instance where this is true, so there's a mushroom at that location. Uh, later on, check if this is a mushroom. I feel like I should store this information because what we're getting back in this instance is not void. We're actually getting the mushroom itself. Is it a bad idea to go and store that information? I mean, what we could do ahead of time. Hmm. Deciding. I wish you could do it directly within here. Assign a variable as a temporary variable and use it, but you couldn't. Or if you could, it's probably bad practice. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I also don't want to call get mushroom every single time we run this loop, obviously, because we're going to be doing this eight times. We could run it here, I suppose, because it would be useful to continuously check what's specific here. Let's say mushroom ahead. Oh, but here's the problem: is we need to determine whether we're looking left or right, because right now we could have two different directions we could be checking. So this is going to be based on the horizontal direction that we set up to begin with. Um, before I was using enumerations, which I wish I could actually still rely on. So right now, for horizontal direction, we have to just use an integer, um, because I'm specifically using that variable as sort of an offset. Uh, multiplying that by the speed to get either you're moving in the negative direction or moving, moving in the positive direction. Um, what I'd like to do, and what I've done before, is just do like an enumeration of direction and say left, right, and be done with that. That would be so much easier to comprehend. But... Couldn't I still do that? Because we could also do enumeration direction and still specify directly what these values are referring to. Make one. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. So we can do that. But then this just gets sort of more complicated as we're multiplying by this value. I think I'm going to leave that off. That would be something I would want to do if I was managing, say, the code base more often. It'd make more sense to me than just uh, an integer value that we're multiplying by. Uh, it's hard to imagine it. Okay. So, in this one instance, we're going to be lazy. And say, we checked it, we got the mushroom. Maybe we could just return, like, a boolean value better, but we want to get the mushroom specifically, so it doesn't matter in this instance. Uh, if it's true, we now need to double check if it's poison or not. We could call that within here. Um, field get mushroom dot? No, it doesn't like that. because we don't have mushroom to find. Uh, we need to include mushroom. 
So we're calling mushroom operations for sure. We have methods to double check if mushroom is poison or not. Dot poison. Oh, we shouldn't be able to access that directly. Why are we able to access that directly? Wait a moment. Did I do a bad thing? Oh no, that's a method. Oh, okay, so. We're not, we're not poisoning it in this instance. <laughs> the centipede should not be calling poison. Um, we're gonna have... Uh, a bull... Is poison? In which case... We're calling upon the mushroom directly. Not doing the implementation. Yeah, that'll work. Let's implement this file, this this method, in mushroom.cpp. It's gonna be with the poison method. Mm. So mushroom is poison. And we're just gonna return. What is our poison variable call? Also, I have to pop my neck, so I'm going to mute my camera for half a sec. Okay, that is so satisfying. So satisfying to pop your neck, but everyone that I do that in front of always gives me a weird look. So. Poisoned is our variable. So, then our implementation, we're going to return poisoned, which is just a bully, right? Yeah. Cool. That makes things easy. Tells us if, if that is poison or not. So, we could say, else if the field mushroom... But if we call is poisoned, that's bad, because this could be no pointer. So, once again, we just need to call it get mushroom. So, <laughs> damn it. All right. In this instance, we do believe it is, ex it exists. So we're gonna say mushroom is equal to. Ugh, do we want to call temp? Temp. It's equal. To, ugh, I don't like the, the variable name temp. Mushroom. Adjacent. Mush is equal to the field get mushroom uh, at the POS. Now, with the JSON mushroom, we need to do a couple things. Um, also, this isn't forgetting check direction. Uh, that needs to be done before the if check, so check direction. Okay. So we have a mushroom. We now need to determine if that is poison or not, so. Adjacent mush. He is poison. Do something. Mushroom is poisoned. Else. Mushroom is not poison. Centipede's going along, hits the wall, returns back. We haven't done Rose yet. Rose is going to be an interesting implementation as well. Uh, runs into a mushroom and it says something. Right now, let's just print to the console. So, console message. Oh god, what's the console called? Console message. Right line. Is that right? Mushroom hit. Let's run it, and ideally, when we run into a mushroom, we should see now, now in the console right here. <laughs> Unless we run into an error, which would be perfect. This is a method. Come. Okay. 
And we threw an exception! Oh yeah! That's exciting. Let's see what our exception is. So... Oh right, but none of this will work because we don't have a reference to the mushroom field yet. We need to provide that within the level 1 uh, implementation of the mushroom centipede head. So, we create a centipede head here. We create an unnamed centipede head. We need to change that. <clears throat> We're going to call a centipede head pointer called Centiboy. This is only temp. Is equal to new new centipede head SF vector to F and just a random coordinates that seem to pretty much line up with the mushrooms. Later on, we'll actually give you know definitive coordinates vector to F. Now Centiboy. Dot set field, and what we're going to pass is the player one field in this instance. Oh. Player one field. So now it has an, a proper reference to the mushroom field that we want, so that's good. Oh, it's still running in the background. Whoops. <laughs> Go ahead and stop that. And now it runs properly. Now, mushroom hit. Is it hitting it at the right time, though? I can't tell. Um, also, one problematic thing about this console message output, so specifically to this console, is it is not allowing us to provide, say, um, oh, you know what? We could provide, a, like, an integer counter. Uh, but that might be too much work. It's not, like, printf, unfortunately, so I can't... Well, then again, if it was printf, it would do so much more either. Anyway. Once again, so hit. It feel like I feel like there's a delay. It looks like there's a delay. But that just might be the delay to print as a console. So here would be our definitive check. Uh, we're gonna break, make a breakpoint the moment uh, we hit this line. That's almost immediate. I think that's good. We're gonna try that again. So it should hit it right now. That's pretty good, gotta say. Um, does it actually look like it's freezing on the screen? I don't know what that looks like. Let me watch stream while it does that. Oh, it does actually just freeze. That's actually really useful as, <laughs> as a double checker. Um, okay, so that's good. Um, right now, however, there is a problem. Um, first off, we're not checking direction, we're just saying when we smack down hit a mushroom, report it. Um, another issue that we're running into... Well, actually, that, does, that has to do with direction, but we're not checking, you know, next to us. We're not seeing the tile ahead of us or behind us. Um, what we want to be able to do is to be able to drop down a row, but we need to think ahead before we can do that. We need to be able to look ahead of us and say, hey, there's a mushroom right there, it's time to start turning. So, that's what we're going to start working on soon. I don't know if we're doing that next. But good, we're hitting mushrooms properly. So we know that we're at least moving through that logic all right. Uh, something else I'd like to double check is... And I don't think... You know what, this will be very often. Um, if only... I know what I can do. Right line. Uh, console message. Right line. Hit poison. I'm going to increase the spawn rate of the scorpions to be an insanely high amount. To be like, one. So they're spawning every single second. Um, we want to poison as many mushrooms as we can. Because we want to see if the uh, centipede head actually runs into one of these guys. Spawn frequency, I guess I could do a zero. Oh no, never mind. He, we got a poison mushroom row. So he is hitting poison properly. We're seeing hit poison in the console. Right here. Which is good. We want to make sure that logic was checking out. Cool. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with now, say, like the mushrooms and interacting with the mushroom object, making sure that the boolean for poison is sent properly. That all works out okay. So good. My mouse is all, all messed up. Okay. Come on, people. All my boxes. Next up, let's go back to the Centipede Head. 
This is also all I have to technically work on for the sprints. All the other sprints have been like, work on these three big things, or work on these other two big things. This one's like, just work on the centipede head. It's the most difficult thing you can do, just do that. <laughs> um, we're also leaking memory, which I've been kind of worried about. And I think... Well, before I thought it was because we had a collision. Because, for some weird reason, it's this weird engine. The game engine isn't the best, um, as the professor states. I think it's his. Uh, is when we deregister collision, if there's not already a collision object, it will, I think, create an object so it doesn't crash. Um, but you're gonna have a memory leak as a result of that. But it's not that. I know exactly what it is. It's when we uh, are in level 1, we're not actually deleting this uh, descending boy. So, say when we were terminating, we had delete senti boy. Which is not stored right now, that's a local variable, so that wouldn't work. If we stored, for example, senti boy in the level 1 implementation, if it was associated with level 1, we could do that, but right now it's not. So, it's fine. We'll deal with the memory leak, we're only leaking one thing, we're trying to reduce as many memory leaks as possible. Zero memory leaks is our ideal situation. Um, if we have one, we can work with it, but we're going to try to minimize as many or as much as we can. Anyway, so, what do we work on next? I guess we should start working on like determining horizontal direction and looking ahead. That's our next plan. So, that changes how this else branch works. Um, I'm going to be explicit instead of saying, like, for most of these methods, you can see, like, field get mushroom POS. I'm not saying equals equals, or does not equal no pointer, for example, because that's assumed. Um, for this one, I'm going to be explicit and specifically say if it equals one, which means right, or if it equals negative one, which means left. <laughs> um, to help myself out. Because I forget already. H direction is our variable. If. Uh, this should be an else if, shouldn't it? Else if h direction equals equals negative one. Moving left. I hate these if branches. I hate having a lot of if branches. I wish I could minimize this. And I bet there's probably a better way to go about it, and we'll do that once we have the good implementation, or once we have like it working kind of how we want it to be. The movement is down, then we'll work on seeing if we can reduce some of these checks, uh, ideally. But for now, we're doing this. Which is something I don't want to do, but hey, I gotta do it. Um, right now, all of this is unused. Oh, jeez. Because now we're working within the directions. So, we've determined that we're not within these bounds. There's a problem with these bounds as well, though, because we need to be able to see ahead once again, so we're also going to have to change those. Um, we have an or check right now, which I guess is okay. We could subtract from the left screen size, or the right screen size. Um, in this instance, pls.x is less than the value for the left screen. Left screen right now is pretty much zero, let's just assume it's zero, it's it's pretty much the sprite width, but we're not going to ignore that. So if the length of POS, yeah, okay, so this is fine. For the left screen we're going to subtract and we need a certain amount to look ahead. I believe the amount that we want to do, it's going to be, sorry not subtract, we're going to add tile size plus tile offset. minus tile size, minus tile offset. We're just gonna watch it, see if it looks okay. This should be about a frame ahead. Or about a mushroom ahead. It's not that at all. It is... <laughs> he just kept going. Uh, okay. I'll have to check the other Destruction. Let us make a breakpoint uh, 
uh, here in just a sec. We're gonna wait till we go outside the bounds. And make a breakpoint. Oh! Which we never hit anymore. Why is that? Wait, wait. Hmm. We should hit this, shouldn't we? So it's still running, technically. Let's just do the check. And go look in our watch window. <clears throat> right now, what's the POS? It's negative 18, great. Um, the left screen value is zero, flat out. That's not right, what? Left screen should be zero. Main sprite dot get texture rect dot width. Oh, it's unable to do that. It should still be value though. Oh. Uh. Has no address. Right. That makes sense. <clears throat> What's right screen? Well, right screen's a proper value. It feels weird to have that at zero. I thought that should be some value of like eight. Anyway. So left screen is POS dot X less than or equal to less screen. It is. I know what I forgot to do. I forgot to initiate tile size and tile offset. So tile size and tile offset are here, but they're so insanely large because we actually forgot to set values for them. That's why we're not, uh, that's why we're going off screen. So tile size is equal to 16, tile offset is equal to 8. Now it should work properly. <laughs> right now tile offset, or offset should be like 18,000 or something insane like that. Hard point. Okay, that works. It looks like there's about a gap for a mushroom. We can actually test that just by having more mushrooms on screen. Let's do that if we don't die. Um, let's also chill out the uh, scorpion spawner. Up to 10. Okay. We're gonna see how many fleas we can spawn. Because we want to get some on the bounding areas. Not die. <laughs> we would prefer not to die. I should um remove the scorpion and the uh, spider spawner once again. Just have a little less stuff on screen. Actually, right now, it almost works. Why is it slightly off? So <clears throat> okay. let's remove the offsets possibly. I think the offsets are helpful though. What's really throwing me off is the, the leftward bounds. Let's check the rightward bounds and see if that looks right. No, that also looks wrong. Uh, it's how he's bouncing back, so I should essentially be saying, you know, the wall of the screen, one mushroom, and then this third column over, or the second column over in this instance, we got it from zero. He should stop at that location and turn around at that location, but he's going a little bit past that. Which is worrisome. Also, I'm sorry for that chirping, it's the music. Um, I know this soundtrack specifically has some chirps in it. Could do some secret among them. That might be peaceful. Cadence of Hyrule. You know, I've never actually heard the Cadence of Hyrule soundtrack. Let's listen to that. That actually might be nice. Okay. I heard some background beats. I'm making sure like one of my lo-fi soundtracks aren't playing. <laughs> How am I doing on audio? I'm being a little drowned out. Let me turn that down slightly. Okay. Sounds good. Goodish. I'm keeping the screen. Should I make this bigger? I had that like this last stream. So it's a little bit easier to read. Mm, I just like the blue background, that's why I kept it there last time. Bigger, even though I don't necessarily want it to be bigger. There we go. Good. Now we can actually see console output. Okay. Next up, what are we doing next? <clears throat> We're working on that bounding and how that's slightly off. I wish I could just clamp it. That'd be nice. We need to be able to turn ahead of time, which is why we're doing this in the first place. So, 
on screen, plus tile offset, plus tile size. This seems like it'd be enough, so it's a whole tile plus an offset. Can we do plus a whole tile? That's a bad idea. We'll try it. See how much closer it is. So we're looking at the leftward bounds, and we actually already have a mushroom there, which is nice. Yeah, that, that's what we're looking for. Um, why is that? I felt like the offset would be enough to have a mushroom. Keep on watching it. Yeah, looks like he gets about halfway into that other mushroom. And the right side's just too far off. Okay. So... It makes sense in this instance, because... Left screen is zero for some odd reason, I can't figure out why that is. Left screen texture width 2x2. Set this to be zero? Probably not. I imagine. Watching the left screen. I need some fleas down there. Fleas, left side. <laughs> Spun in this area. The RNG isn't that bad. <laughs> it really is. It really likes this area. It really likes this area. That seems off almost. <laughs> What's with that? There you go. Now it starts spawning over there. We're seeding it based on time, so maybe we're just getting really lucky with the time. There we go. That's perfect. That was great. I want to get it a little bit over if I can. What I could do when I kill a mushroom, just drop like 50. Or when I kill a flea. When I kill a mushroom in the player area, just drop like 50 mushrooms or 50 fleas. Make things a lot easier. We died. Okay, what well, looks fine to me. So, in this instance also for the right screen where we get the texture width, I know what's going wrong. The texture width is 2 and we're dividing it by 2. That doesn't even make sense. What we really want in this instance, because this is just actually makes it a value of 1. Well, 2 divided by 2. 1, yeah. So we're subtracting 1, so this just makes such a little, such a minuscule difference. Um, whereas... Let's actually do this for the left screen, too. Um, main sprite dot get texture width. Okay, I'm not liking this music so much. Um, dot width, and that's it. Just don't divide by anything. This should just be two. Sorry, Caden's high roll. Uh, what we're gonna do instead is I wanna do some secret mana. I think. We do Earthbound. Earthbound heavy. Just kind of peaceful music. Here, let's do uh, secret mana. I don't know why specifically for this game. I think I've heard everyone else say mana for this game. So secret mana, like Vinny says that for example. Um, whereas I've always referred to. Mana as mana. My mana pool. I have mana. Never mana, but specifically for this game only. Or for this, yeah, this game only. I have reference to it as mana. So. Habits, I guess. Okay. Now, what are we doing now? We are... Oh, what was that last doing? I forgot. <laughs> Setting the spray. Oh, the bounding. So now we want to see if the bounding actually works with the tile offset. So, once again, tile offset. This should. Right now it's only two, though. Because if we make a breakpoint here, and we say, what's left screen? It's going to say two.
It's gonna say zero. That's even weirder. That makes no sense to me. All right. So this value is gonna be zero, and this value is gonna be just the value of the screen width. That makes it easier for us. I don't like that because my offsets are all gonna be slightly off. That's okay. I don't like not knowing where I am on the screen. That makes me worry. That smells like problems later on down the, down the line. But, minus tile size, minus tile size, and plus tile size, plus tile size. Also, I want to double check. In here we had a conversion error. I guess it's fine now. It's a float. Um, when a manager gets size, this returns in unsigned integer. So let's say it's going to be an integer instead, or a float. And all these other ones are errors. That'd be great. Error specific referring to this. It's too bad, here's what we're gonna do. I had like a, a debug quote unquote mode within the mushroom field that I only ever use very temporarily. This might throw a whole bunch of errors though. Actually, I think it already is. Never mind, that's not gonna work anymore. Uh, that's too bad, that doesn't work. Why doesn't that work? Because mushroom no longer has a constructor. Or no, it does. Now we have to call the mushroom field. I guess we could still do that, right? That's necessarily bad. Nope, doesn't like that. New bees we're calling new, that's why. Will that work? I think we'll throw an error. Or when we're running the game, we'll actually throw an error. No, it actually works great. Okay, great. Nope, there's the error. <laughs> I was like, at some point, I know there's gonna be a problem. Because we're calling, like, Mushroom Field for all this stuff. What we could do is just kind of mess with it and say, Hey, let's not spawn a scorpion or a spider. I'd like to not spawn a flea, but that's kind of required for the Mushroom Field. Uh, no scorpion or spider. No scorpion or spider. Yeah, hey, we're back to where we started on the beginning of the stream. Okay, I know it's hard on the eyes, but it's mostly just to double check this guy's landing in the right place. And to my bleeding eyes, it looks like it is. I think that's how I have to go off of. It looks like it is. I don't know that it is, but it looks like it. Uh, here's, I guess, another check, is we'll create a breakpoint when we actually change direction. Right there. So now... <laughs> Does that look like he's actually in the proper position? I can't tell. Just cannot tell. It doesn't really. Because I don't think it has the sprite offset. The sprite offset, he's supposed to be two pixels over. Which is what that sprite offset, sprite offset is referring to. So... I reset that window. Transform! Reset transform! There we go. Maybe, can we just set that value manually, I guess? That's the whole point of magic numbers in the first place, so. Two float, oh, I hate the idea of that. I like referring directly to the main sprite. Well, maybe that's why, because we're saying it before we actually have the resource manager. Uh, let's do, let's define left screen. We're just gonna work on left screen, and it's after actually we sign the main sprite. That's why we haven't actually signed the main sprite yet. So, main sprite dot get rect texture rect dot width. That's it. And then right screen, it's gonna be the same value minus the main sprite dot get texture width rect. Keep it in Control-A instead of Control-S. I'm a compulsive saver. I'll look right. Yeah. Okay. Time to bleed the eyes again. Uh, we're still... Oh, we got an error. Oh, 
we also have another conversion error. Keep running into those. What does it not like here? Oh, it's still running the code, that's why. Uh, this is still gonna be problematic though, because we want this to be a float. Can we just assign this as a float? I think we can. Um, are we gonna run into trouble with that down here? PLS.x is a floating value as well. Yeah, vector 2f. So let's just make all these floats. So we don't have... I'd like to see if I can avoid warnings if possible. Possible loss of data, not really, but... Ah, uh, just in case. So... Oh, they are floats! What am I doing wrong here? It's an unsigned int is what we're getting back as a value of the return um, for this width. So... What is that? Here. So... Man, understanding these or casting these to floats is fine. Let's give that a go. Once again, it will break point once it hits the wall, and we'll see if it looks like it's in the right place or not. First thing I'm going to check is... Left screen is now a value of 8. Huh. But yeah, that makes sense. Okay, the sprite, I kept saying it's 2. It's actually 8. Um, the sprite should take up... 16 pixels. That's our ratio. So technically, I think he's going to be in the wrong position again. And let's see... Oh, Jesus. Don't move that around. This is actually... Ah, stop it. I gotta lock this window. That's what I gotta do. So I stop grabbing it. Uh, that is VS. Lock. There we go. So... He's still slightly off, but I now think because we can actually just do the tile offset, which worked fine. So, let's go back. And instead of this, we're going to do minus tile offset. And plus tile offset. Run that again. We need to divide by two when we are assigning the left and right screen. Right? Yeah. Divide by two float. And this value. <coughs> divide by two float. Go. Oh, that's a medium. That looks just about right. And the whole reason for this is we're not checking exact position. This isn't what the final, say, appearance is going to look like. What we're doing is just kind of cracking down those numbers that we can use as a reference when we're actually adjusting per tile. This will all be the same times two in another direction, or, you know, offset it by a value of 16 pixels, um, which is the size of one of these columns right here. So, I think that just about does it. He looks like maybe he's one pixel off, so where could that one pixel come from? <sighs> tile size is correct, tile size is correct. So right now, what we're doing is, say, the position from the end of the screen, plus a tile, plus the offset of tile, I can't point that to him so far. Can I move myself over? Yeah, let's actually work with this. So the, the position of a tile. That's a good one. A tile. 16 pixels. Plus an offset. So it should be about in the middle. I think the reasoning for this is the centipede body isn't perfectly circular. It's slightly oval-ish. Um, so the center of that is going to be slightly offset. I think that's where this is coming from. Um, but I can confirm that. We actually have the sprite sheet for that. So let me actually go take a peek at that real quick before I write that off as just being something simple like that. And I also do need to multiply the sprite sheet by two because right now the sprite sheet, which I know is not coming up on screen, you guys can capture that real quick. We have a image capture. That's my background. Uh, window capture. The paint window. 
and oh, get that little tiny box at the top left. There we go. Oh. There's a tiny itty bitty spreadsheet. It's tiny is correct because this thing is like that one little centipede at the top left is nine by nine. <laughs> so. This guy, I want to try to get exact measurements, which is slightly off. No. Right there. Right there. Is 8x9. Now, I don't know specifically how Teal is going to be cutting this. It must be... I'm guessing it's 8x8. So it's going to be one higher. Those are going to be the proportions once I get it right. 8 by 8. So this is technically how it's cutting it. Because we're multiplying that by 2 to get 16 by 16 for the size of one of our tiles. So, it's slightly offset. You see how the, the centipede is a little bit more forward. There's this one little space of white at the very tail of it. And how does our game look again? Does that seem right? We could set the, the origin a little bit differently. We could say subtract by a pixel. I don't know if that's the correct thing to do, though. I'm going to leave it for the time being. If we're a pixel off, we can adjust it afterwards. But for now, I think we're OK. Yeah. OK. Now, let's return this back to our original size. This is what it actually looks like on my screen, by the way, in terms of proportions. It's a little small, so I've actually been scaling it up just a tiny bit. Cool. That's the last of our coffee, and it's 8 o'clock, which means I'm crazy. Switching to water. Does this actually show on screen? No. Good. Mm. What next? Let's stop the game from running. So this positioning is correct now. Where it is on screen. Uh... Oh, actually, you know what? This is just... I forgot about this. This is just the, the bounding for the corners. So that is perfect, actually. We haven't done row yet, but here we're going to swap rows. Uh, here we're going to be checking direction, doing stuff based upon that. What are we doing here? So, for example, if we're moving left, which I think this is, that's what I come from then. Uh, we don't need to. Right here. Console message. Right line. Moving left. Just confirm that it's actually happening. <laughs> Actually, is moving left. That's fine. Kill mushroom. That actually, wait. That isn't fine. What's going on with that? Oh, it's because we're right. That's always gonna break out um, because it's trying to kill the mushrooms that are on the screen, but they actually haven't been allocated properly. But it's fine. This is only for our test mushroom field, which we actually don't even need anymore. So we can actually eliminate this now and return back to. Oh, we we're also creating mushrooms on top of each other. Whoops. It's fine. So, we know this is moving left, we know this is moving right, now we need to check within those bounds. So, what we can do is we can check, get a mushroom by inputting the offset from our position directly. So say, it's going to be similar to before, down here. Where we say field get mushroom if this, but the position is gonna be a little bit different, so we're gonna have to call sf vector 2f of position.x, position.y, and we need to 
specify an offset there. Doesn't like this. I think I'm missing a parentheses. Yep. And same bit for this down here. Out what our offsets are going to be. Um, I think it's just going to be the same as before, so plus tile size, plus tile offset, plus tile, uh, position y should remain the same in all instances. We're just checking x bounds. Plus tile size, plus tile offset. Good. Do that. Uh, we're not doing anything though. <laughs> we should maybe like print something just to know we're actually hitting those bounds. Uh, Console message, uh, right line. There's a mushroom to my left. Can we do breakpoints and figure it out that way? Yes. Am I lazy by just doing console messages? Yes. <laughs> oh, also, <laughs> it doesn't make sense to say left in both instances. There's a mushroom to my right. There we go. <laughs> Properly printed one to the right, now we should get two lefts. Lefts. Do we get them at the right time though? That's again where our issue is lying. Are we actually hitting these mushrooms at the right time? Let's create a breakpoint. Just for example when we're going to the right, to make sure it stops in the right position. That is absolutely not in the right position. Where's that stopped? That's nowhere near a mushroom. What did I do wrong here? Oh, because, right, because we're constantly checking this every frame. Uh, we're gonna need to do this when we actually print the message. That's why we need to create a breakpoint. Just checking the logic, but it might not return true. Did it pass two mushrooms? I feel like it passed two in that instance. One. I think this also might be problematic because we're not flipping the uh, centipede, so it looks wrong going one way. It might be a pixel closer. We should have about the space. Well, we should be in a, um, a cell right now. That's where our position should be. That should be within a cell. Hmm. Let's work on just flipping the sprite, because I think that'll help sort of see what's going on a little bit better. So for now we're gonna ignore this. Also, I'm gonna be right back in, like, say, a minute or so. Two minutes.
Is that about two minutes? I don't know if it was or not. Okay, I am back. Back to the test window. I forgot to turn on my camera. Boop. There we go. <laughs> I also scooted over. I forgot about that. There we go. Ah, I love this music. I've also been listening to, like, non-stop Studio Gabini, so... It's nice to have a change from that, even though it is still nice, calming, peaceful music. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Studio Gabini. Like, the two-hour-long, all Studio Gabini music, and then just listen to that, like, eight times. <laughs> Gilbini, Gilbini. Gilbini, Gilbini. Anyway. What were we working on last time? Flipping the direction is something we're going to be working on. So that's actually specifically when we're working here. Each direction is equal to each direction times negative one. And here's a problem. Right now, in order to flip the sprite, we're setting a scale. Hmm. I know what I can do. A little cheap, but uh, we'll do main sprite dot set scale. H direction, H direction, and two float. H direction times two, because we want this to be scaled by two. 2.0 flow. Um, H direction is that? That's an integer, right? So, times two, but we're gonna cast this all to be a float. That should do it. So now he should be properly flipping when he hits one side. We'll see if he does. It also might break point. Nope, it didn't. Oh, but it's reversed. Uh, negative? That won't work, right? Is that where you put the negation? I thought it'd be inside the parentheses. No, that works. Okay, great. <laughs> Fantastic. That should be the only time the sprite really flips. Other than when we hit a mushroom, so... Yeah, this works. Now we need to determine if this looks right in terms of, um, breakpoint, so... Breakpoint. Wait for it to hit. That's way off! Ooh, that's not good at all! You're practically running into the mushroom at that point. Uh... But this is a test. Once again, this is a test. I keep forgetting about that. So... Back out of this. Oh, <laughs> don't run from me. Um, back to Centipede. Run here. Uh, what happened there? What? That didn't work at all. Um, we're doing Mushroom to the left. Let's try Mushroom to the right again. Only when we should be printing it, so right now, essentially. That looks almost good. Why is our offset so weird? We're inside a cell right now, so that's good. But I feel like it's variable. Okay, let's try this again, see if that exact same you know, distance between the, the player and the mushroom is equal. I think it's because we're counting frames, and that's maybe problematic? Maybe we shouldn't be counting frames. Maybe we shouldn't. We have a constant speed right now. That's so far off! No! That's terrible! Now we have a whole other mushroom in between us and the other mushroom. from the beginning. Let me do that every fourth frame. 
That means we would get closer, wouldn't it? Not necessarily. That's about the same distance we just had. Mm -hmm. Try that a second time. Four should not be the value that we're counting frames at, though. That's almost the exact same distance, I swear. Uh, maybe the first time we saw this is a fluke. I'm gonna try eight again and see if that's just a consistent result. Seems consistent there. Seems consistent there. I don't know what was with that one instance. Possibly... I think response should always, it should always be in the same location. We're setting that properly. Huh. Okay. Well! We're gonna work with this for the time being and hope that these offsets aren't weird. The thing that bugs me is the mushroom that's right below that one. So you have the centipede, there's a mushroom that's below the centipede, off to the right a little bit, and then the one above it. So we should be turning... Should we be turning now? Oh, I don't actually remember when we were supposed to necessarily turn. Okay, I gotta play the online game for a second. I gotta use my reference. Gotta move so fast. We are turning too early. We gotta turn... Ooh, we gotta turn. It's difficult to go off. What I need to do for the reference is actually pause it the second it's about to turn. Which I'm going to do now. So it appears it's turning. <laughs> so I can actually see it. Which I know it's not showing up on screen, apologies. So it's actually pretty much coming in contact with the mushroom before it starts beginning to turn. That's what I'm understanding from this so far. So we are detecting it too early. We're looking too far ahead. Because we don't want to be in that tile and be like, hey, we're, we're having the straight, you know, sprite. Let's start moving now. We want to determine that where we are, and then once we get into the next tile, start turning. So I think we're in a good place. I hope we're in a good place. I don't know if we are. <laughs> we're going to try it this way for now. If we run into trouble, we'll just sit out the back to Anyways, let's return this back to normal again. Sets. There it is. And now, let us do stuff within these. statements. Game is still running. Just realize that. There we go. So we have determined that there is a mushroom within this location. We need to determine if that's a poison mushroom or not. So, in either instance, I think this should just be an, uh, an else check. Oh, there's a problem here. I just realized. The left position. Position X. How could it be this silly? Minus tile size, minus tile offset. That's why the left one was feeling weird. The right one's still good to go. The left one was just miles off. 
Okay, so now this should be... Oh, how do we actually get it right? Console output again. Console message. Right line. Left. And right. Right, right. Now that should be left to left. Left, left. Let's actually do a breakpoint for the left check. It bothers me how close that is. And there's the other left one. We're gonna run it again. Let's see if it's the same amount. It is, I think, the same amount. I just can't tell. It doesn't have that huge gap though that we do when we're going to the right. Let's now maybe check to the right. Look at the difference in that gap. That's insanely different. Why is that? Size tell offset. Did the same variables for the both of them. Trying to decide, trying to think it out. Um, I think it's specifically when we're calling this check. I hope our current frame isn't off. And there's the other one. I need to stare at it for a little bit longer. Left to left. And then the right check. Such a huge distance for right. I'm gonna... I don't want to mess with the origin though, because I feel like if I mess with the origin, that's gonna throw everything off. Uh, for now though... We're not going to divide by 2 for the origin. I feel like we should actually multiply by 2. The origin is... Yeah, so here's the problem with that. Immediately we're running into a little bit of trouble. Putting it on screen, determining where the mushroom is, big problems with that. So we went off this original little mount, let's keep it on that original mount. Origin checking is not what's the problem here. really bothers me that that's now so close to the right mushroom. It's like all of our timing is slightly off, and it's variable, which is not good. We do not want a variable timing or variable checking. We want to be able to be consistent, you know. Exactly when we're in that middle of that column, that's when we check. And I feel like right now frame counting is the best option. Because it isn't a good idea to say, hey, when our position is in the middle of the tile, check the next tile. Because we're going to have constant of checks for that. You can do it every eight frames. Do those if checks. But the middle of the, the tile is kind of, it's a floating point number, whereas we have like fluid movement, so it's always going to be slightly offset. We're, you know, comparing floats to floats, which is a bad idea.
look around. I'm trying to think of this out. I guess I'll come back to this later. Again, I keep saying that and I'm worrying myself that I'm saying, hey, let's come back to it later. Check it out later. I'm going to put it on my to-do list that this is slightly off. And hopefully I can find a better way of going about offsetting this. Um, I'm using an online to-do list for that, so this is going to fall underneath the centipede head. Um, I've got to spawn, I've got to move left and right, I have not got to move down. I've not saved the movement in an array and I haven't created a factory. I do need to figure out uh, offset well. That's our new to-do list item for that. Blaster, I still need a factory for the blaster. I should remember to do that when I get a chance. So what I was going to do instead of checking the h-direction, which we will do, but we also need to grab the mushroom specifically. Now I remember why this is problematic, because we're checking you know, left mushroom versus right mushroom. So now we're going to say, <coughs> if this mushroom... Same thing for the other side. So if this thing happens once again, but in this instance it's poison, do one thing, else do another. Do poison thing. <laughs> uh, let's see right here. We could call different methods for, let's say, poison move and normal move, just to not have such a long if branch here. That'd probably be a good idea. I'll break that out later. I think that'll be easier to do after the fact. Um, say, start pulling these out and putting them into their own methods. Um, for example, specifically when we're checking the direction, we do that just specifically within the move and then call that over to a, a helper function to do the remainder of the checking. <clears throat> For now, do we really want just a really long if branch? Oh, <laughs> resource limits have been exceeded. Thank you, game. We need a variable to see if we've been poisoned. So in this instance, do poison thing, poisoned, is equal to true. I'm gonna keep that do poison thing up here, just to remind myself where I am. Do poison thing. Same instance down here. Else we're doing just the normal movement, which I think in this this case, um do normal movement, not necessarily actually more normal movement, um Ran into a normal mushroom. He's been determined that there's a mushroom there. We need to start turning. Uh, not even ran into one. Begin turning down. We also need to do more stuff if it's poison, so we can do like, you know, 
poison move for my method. Uh, in fact, we might even do that as a <coughs> new method. Void poison move. Poison move. Centipede head. That's good. Poison move. Nope, not poisoned. Poison move. I cannot spell poison right. Cool. What we need to do in this instance, though, is we need to. I guess it doesn't matter if we pass directional information, we're still within the same class. Um, I was gonna say, we might, it might be useful to say, hey, we're moving left or right. Actually, yeah, we should do that. We can call a different method based on which direction we are at. Right, that's a better idea. It depends on whether we're gonna be able to use our horizontal direction as, say, a function of moving horizontally. Again, um, optimization come later. I'm worried about optimization now. <laughs> so now we need to begin turning downwards. Um, I think we can even say move row, move down. Uh, row down? Also, all of this is also assuming that we're moving downwards on the screen. Once we have, um, once we get to the very bottom of the screen, moving up and down is going to become a whole different issue. But for right now, we're okay. We're going to create another method called... Should we call this, like, move down row? Void, um... <clears throat> Switch row? has to do with movement, so I'll keep it with this bunch. <coughs> I don't think we need to specify the row either, so we don't need to say specifically, hey, move row downwards, or um, say what row number is. Okay, there's another shell method that we're going to work on later. I'm going to drop straight down in that instance. To move down one row in this instance. And move down one row shouldn't actually be too bad, we're just gonna adjust the position record. Um, it's only gonna become problematic when we actually get to the bottom. So actually, I think that's all we really need to do in terms of moving down. Um, the actual movement down sprite is gonna be problematic. We'll do that in a sec. Um, the fact that we can even just get that logic working properly is all that kind of matters right now. So we're going to, uh, what's this method called? Switch row. Actually, just switch row. That's it. Switch row. Later on, we might say, hey, if we, we want to switch row left, switch row right, depending on which direction we want to curve down. Right now, I don't think it matters. Um, we can always adjust the methods after the fact, or create just a copy of that method, and specifically change the variables around later on, um, for saving one if check, I think. Again, it depends on how we implement it. So now we're switching rows. <laughs> what do we do then? Uh, it's beginning to move. So we want this sort of like nice curve to go down. Um, we can either do like multiply by variables of pi, 3.14, in order to get sort of a curve motion. We could use like sines and cosines and stuff like that. Um, that's later on. We could try that off the bat if we really want to hurt ourselves. Or in the meantime, we can just do a straight drop down. So, get to the position that we need to. God, we need to frame count again, don't we? Do we? When we detect it, we can start turning them. I think we can start turning them. So, what we're specifically going to start doing? Let me open up this again. 
Oh, my green screen's starting to fall. It's fun. There you go, green screen. Slightly off kilter, it always wants to fall. Lately, it's always been wanting to fall. This seems to last long. Uh, we'll capture. Paint. And then, ooh, this is zoomed out, isn't it? Oh, that's my teal window! No, I didn't want to capture that. Well, well that's great. Hi, Paint. Let me start the game up again so I can capture the right window. This window shouldn't be teal. There it is. And the window capture should be paint. Oh, that worked out perfectly. Okay, so this little guy. Right now, for this sprite sheet, we are incrementing through the first row. So all those top ones are what we're sort of running through. You can kind of see little feetsies that move along as you go around. Um, we're now going to be implementing, I think, just straight turning. Yeah. The very last four, or if we get poisoned, we're going to drop straight down, essentially. Um, we're just turning in this instance. We need, like, rotation, don't we? Because this isn't how we're turning. Um, we can, of course, flip it for if we're turning left or right. Uh, but we need to rotate this thing. Okay. I need a function. That's what I'm going to look for right now. A function that we can, say, multiply by in order to get a nice little curve. So we need to be able to figure out sort of degrees of rotation. But how do we translate degrees of rotation? There should be a rotation method within the teal. Let me double check that. Main sprite dot rotate, get rotation, set rotation. Set rotation sets the orientation of the object. The function completely overwrites the previous rotation. See the rotate function to add an angle based on the previous rotation instead. Which we might want to do. Rotate. Rotates the object. This function adds the current rotation to the object, unlike set rotation, which overwrites it. I think we're going to do an incremental rotation. I don't like the idea of that, because I feel like we might have some room for error there, so we could slightly overshoot or slightly undershoot the rotation that we want to. Um, as like maybe a safety precaution, after we think we've finished the rotation, we could just set the rotation to be like a perfect 180. Um, thus, it is equivalent to the following code, object.setRotation, yada yada, angle. This is just a check. This shouldn't function properly, but we're just gonna check it. ND900, not ND9000? ND900. 180. Oh, it did rotate 180. But it re oh, because there's two mushrooms. It's reset. <laughs> it's hitting both mushrooms and turning back on its head. No, it's resetting. What? There it works. Why is it detecting it twice? Oh, it's detecting it twice. 
That's not good. We don't want that, because then it's going to try switching two rows. That's pretty bad. Huh. Let's do... Let's do a straight drop. POS plus equals tile size plus tile offset. Of course, that's not going to work, though, because POS.Y is equal to that. What's going on, Nappa? Welcome, welcome. I thought it does lower it... Wait. I thought it does lower if it hits a tree. Yeah, that's what we're working on right now. It's a mushroom. Um, that's what we're working on right now. Um, it does rotate. Right now we're working on just detection. So as it comes along and it should see ahead of it by one tile, if it detects ahead of it by one tile, do something. That's the logic we're working on right now. Which, of course, what we're supposed to do is it's supposed to drop, so it's supposed to lower. But that's what we're working on. Um, and the detection for seeing the tree up ahead of it is based on frame counting, which I think is not the best route to go about. Or we're doing it improperly, which I think it's the latter. I don't think we're doing it correctly. <laughs> That's not right. It's doing... It's dropping once, dropping twice. Dropping once. It's offset, so now it's not even lined up properly, from what I'm seeing. It's also detecting ones that are not even in its row, I think. Let me check that again. Also, sorry Secret Mana, we're gonna switch off you, even though you've been wonderful. Let's play... I kinda wanna go back to Animal Crossing. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Soundtrack, um, god, what I can't think of anything else other than Witcher right now. Shovel Knight, Shovel Knight has an okay soundtrack. I don't know if it has a phenomenal soundtrack. Grenia, Earthbound we thought about, we decided against. Chrono Trigger, maybe. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do Castlevania. <laughs> That'd be a fun one. Uh, we're gonna do... You know what we have done? Is like, the other Donkey Kong soundtracks. Let's do that. This is the third game. I wanna do Donkey Kong, so we're gonna stick to this one. Um, so we're gonna watch this again. As it falls down. Falls down once. We gotta change direction, that's what we gotta work on. Maybe that's where I'm getting slightly turned away. So... Each direction? That's what it's called? each direction is equal to each direction. I can do times equals, can I? Times equals one. Negative one. I did that somewhere else by accident too. Right here. Times equals negative one. Okay. Oh yeah, that's offsetted. That's... is it dropping enough though? <laughs> it's not even running to those mushrooms. It has fallen too far. Oh, what? Oh, I don't like that. That makes me really worry. Because we're not dropping it properly. So... This is in switch realm. Plus Y, plus Y. It's off-centered. Oh yeah, I know. That's what I'm working on now. Thank you. Plus equals tile size plus tile offset. What's that have to do with this being two separate variables, right? So I guess this is too far. Possibly not the tile offset, possibly just the tile size itself. Because it's already offset it. Ah, it's already offset it from its current position, so we don't need to re-offset it. Is that still off? Yeah, it is. Well, no. That looks okay. It's detecting it too early, in my opinion. That's actually good. Just in the sense of, like, being in the right column. Or being in the right row. That's great. Um, of course, it isn't bounding on the right and the left side. I gotta do that in a sec. And I... 
actually don't think we're detecting it too early because we need to do that nice, like, little curve. So we're gonna... that's perfect. No, it's not too early, so it's actually good. Because we need to do, like, a curve, so this is actually fine. Um, the curve is gonna, you know... We're gonna go into the next column with that curve and come out of it, so that's actually perfect. And it is supposed to run into mushrooms as it's coming down, from my understanding. Perfect! Read access. Ghoul mushroom is poisoned. Why did we do that when we ran into the blaster? We don't have poison with the blaster. That's my call stack. So the move is poison. That's not good. Where is it currently on screen? Oh, I just realized the sprite sheet's still up. Whoops! <laughs> Let me hide the spreadsheet. No, there's no collision on it. Yeah, there's zero collision right now. Um, I'm wondering why it called that, though. Let me look through the call stack a little bit more. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So it is within the move method, it's specifically here, and we actually have... Is that where we're currently at? No, we're not currently here, we're in the poison method. So why are you throwing air? Currently the mushroom it tried to reference is null. Which I thought we'd check for. We did check for this, we check if it's null pointer at all. So we check that here, we get the mushroom at that location. And we check that that's poison. So this first if check should have actually proven whether that was poison or not. Or if it was existing. It's saying it's FTFT. What's FT is a magic number? FTFT, FT, magic number. That's as I thought, like header or something like that. Um, Microsoft magic numbers. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Magic number programming. FT, FT, FT. Use by Microsoft C++ debug malloc function to mark no man's land. Guard bytes before and after allocation heap memory. So we reference something outside of heap, outside of the heap. Um, what does that mean for us? Okay, let's run it again. I want to see if it actually fails in that same location. Because <laughs> if it does, it might just be something to do with how those mushrooms are not nullified when we actually get to the bottom. Um, that was something I was actually running into a little bit of trouble with when we are actually creating the entire collision, or the entire mushroom field. Once you finish the game, add in an easter egg by shooting some of the mushrooms in a specific order to promote your Twitch channel. Sadly, I think I would lose points if I did that. <laughs> it's a good idea, though. <laughs> are we changing directions? We're not. Okay, I'm gonna let this finish. Well, let me switch back. So the head of it, and the move method. You rotate by 180 degrees, which is the same as actually switching the offset, so that's fine. Or should it fall faster? We can actually get some fleas on here to make it fall faster. The teacher would have to find the points. I give him the source code, though. <laughs> <laughs> they feel like, what's with all these nefarious, unneeded methods within the, um, the mushroom class? Still breaks. It has to do with this last mushroom on screen. Or it's... We're not referencing the mushroom field. It's specifically calling a mushroom... Um... There shouldn't be a mushroom there in the first place. I think specifically what's going on is I don't have any mushrooms in this very last low row. And in fact, we shouldn't even, I think, initialize them. Technically, that is FD, FD, FD. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, so it has to do when we create the mushroom field. That's why I got a debug right now. In fact, let's actually set a breakpoint. I don't want to run all the way down there again. Uh... It's going to be within this mushroom field creation. Mushroom field. This one. And... I believe we still know a plan. 
let me go to... Where we create them. This in the... yeah, this in the initializer. Um, or the constructor. So... We never actually hit this point, do we? Oh, we do! Okay, great. So now, I'm gonna take a peek at the mushroom field. Mushy tile. Max is 30 is 0. Unable to read memory. Because it's not 30, it's 29. Mushy tile. Columns. How many columns do we have? We should actually have 32. Um, 29, 0. That's null. That's what we expect. Oh, I know what's going on. But it's in the middle. Uh, it's at the very bottom. So it's sort of, this is an outlier. Um, specifically to get the column in the row position. While well, the character's at the very bottom. We're doing an integer truncation to fall off floating values. Um, give me your source code. I'm going to steal your idea when the aliens attack with the mushroom force. That's a perfect idea. <laughs> You just go shoot, shoot, pew, pew with the old blaster guy. I think it's supposed to be like a, a garden sort of scenario. It's, the history of Seneca is actually pretty neat. Um, so right now, what we're doing, Mushy Tile 29 and I think 31 is actually our max, maximum bounds. Yeah. But if, say, we call Mushy Tile 30 zero, or Mushy Tile, which is just my mushroom field, 29, 32. Why is 32 nothing? We should put null there. Can we specific? We should maybe specifically specify that? I feel like that would run into a, a bounds error. Let's do plus one here. Plus one here. This is probably going to throw an error somewhere. We should never technically be checking. Oops those locations, but it just nullifies them in case we actually, uh, check it for whatever reason. We shouldn't be spawning any mushrooms there in the first place. This is all fine. And it falls properly. We're still not spawning mushrooms in the last row, which is good. We don't want to. But this prevents, say, the centipede from running to an error on this very final row. And that it did. That it did. Okay, let's see if we can get a mushroom down here just to make very absolute sure. On the absolute last row, which we can't spawn within, but we can get this close. Error. Dang it. Shoot. Okay. So where was it? That's what we gotta figure out. What was the column? We know it. Did we pass it anything? No, we didn't, because we need a breakpoint in order to get that. Okay. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get a breakpoint when we're down there and just figure out what's the column and row combination that's actually causing this to break. This sounds like Mario. Will this get down here on its own court? I think it will. So the thing that we're doing specifically that's breaking it is... This method. So we're gonna get ready for that method. Oh! Well, that's weird. No mushroom spawn in that row. Huh. Luck of the draw, I guess. How much is this game in gigabytes? It's not even in a gigabyte. It's it's in the I'm surprised it even hits the megabytes. The reason why it's hitting the megabytes is the framework in the background. This could be in the kilobytes, I'm sure. Um but it's it's in the megabytes. Right now, for in terms of processing, um, it's hitting 49 megabytes at the very top right. Just about. Which is a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> um, some of these creatures on screen, like the centipede itself is, I, I think, 141 bytes the last time I checked. Okay, I'm gonna get ready with this method. It's gonna be on one of the next ones. 49 megabytes is a lot. It is a lot. Each of these mushrooms has a lot of info to it. 
Um, I should give answer real quickly. I guess this is gonna break otherwise. Oh no, we were in the right place. Or were we? No, we weren't. It's because it advanced. I waited too long. Uh, so yeah, 49 megabytes is a lot. It's uh, each one of these mushrooms are passing a pointer, and we're passing. What's we're passing? Bunch of integers, bunch of floats. So. <clears throat> We're in 32-bit mode, so each pointer is four bytes. So four bytes, four bytes. This bitmap, which is not controlled by me, I don't know the size of the bitmap. I'm sure that's pretty big. Um, parent field is something I control. That's just a pointer, though, so four bytes there. Um, four bytes for all these temporary or these these variables, essentially. Um, minus the bool, which is going to be a byte. And then that's per mushroom on screen, so there's a lot of mushrooms. Um, that alone might not be even getting close to the cap of a megabyte, I mean, thousand bytes. I think all of my resources probably will hit about two bytes, two, <laughs> two megabytes. Um, but all the background stuff like the image processing and the sound processing, the collision processing, all that fun stuff, that's the external advantage stuff that I don't control. Um, and that's where all the extra megabytes are coming from. So, we're gonna have to break it again. <laughs> this is the only way I'm gonna think about going about it. Uh... Oh shoot. Continue. I wish I had a conditional breakpoint that I could fill out here. I don't think a conditional breakpoint would help, because I can't specifically say, hey, if the value there is hex value FD, 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 I guess we could, couldn't we? But that work. If the return of that function, well, yeah, I guess we could. Yeah, no matter. I don't know if we can do a function call within the um, conditional break point area. Anyway, we're getting down, I think, to this row. That's where we're gonna call it. It gets down too fast for me to be able to respond to it. So... What is with that? Specifically within the mushroom field... Number of columns, which is left and right. Number of rows, we could do plus two possibly. That might help out, because we usually don't allocate those last two rows. Let's see if that helps. Um, what we're gonna do instead, so we don't have to wait for it to fall the entire time, is we're just gonna increase the speed by a whole lot. Uh, I think hopefully that shouldn't run into any problems. If we see if we run into the very the bottom row or not. Um, speed is going to be times. We actually use speed in our calculation, right? Our movement. Movement current frame plus plus. That scale. Where do we move? Times five. I'm planning to do it in like times five. Um, I gotta make sure that I actually use that like calculation though. Is this where we use it? If current frame equals eight, yeah. Okay. Speed times. Okay. So we're just gonna multiply it by right now. It's multiplied by two based on what our initial value is. Um, so our offsets are still correct. We're gonna do sixteen, which should make it go really fast. But We'll see if we run into an error or not. Oh, it's not able to detect it fast enough. Great, let's do, I guess, four. Two times as fast again. Hopefully it's still able to detect all the mushrooms. Nope, it's too fast for it. Is it flipping directions? No, it just can't detect it. Ugh, all right. So we have to base it off too. We must wait it out. That's what we get for using. Frame counting. I just don't like how snappy it is when it runs into one of these mushrooms. How do you solve for it if it's too fast? Um, that's a good question. I'll figure that out later. We are gonna have to increase the speed at some point. Uh, I think when we do that, we have to change our tile offset. Three? We don't want three. We want offsets of four because um, our tile offsets are multiples of eight. Multiples of... 
we want a multiple of, I think 16 in the end, because our tile size is 16. Um, so our offset specifically for the frame checking is every half. It walk through a tree, it's supposed to. When it falls down, it's supposed to. Like that. Did we change anything? We're not gonna be able to check here. Ugh. So, I know it's undefined. God, I wish I had some information I could pass to it. Call snack. It's like I want to manually set all these values to be null. That's not a good idea. I'm assuming, well, I guess we could print the value that we're hitting. Maybe that's a good idea. No, because we don't actually have access to the column and row right here. Um, no, let's see, it's in mushroom field. in mushroom field when we populate if these eyes are null. Which No, they're not. They're still not null actually. Well 2931 is which is weird. But 2932 is still not. Now, <sighs> here's an idea. Also, let's see if this works. Um, I think I'm gonna loop through and just nullify them all. Maybe that'll be better. Okay, so having the plus one here does help for outside bounds. Plus one on the number of columns. This plus one doesn't seem to actually affect anything. The number of rows. We're still gonna have a plus one, I think. I think it's needed. It's okay. If we continue, this doesn't have heap corruption, does it? No. But, we have a, uh, a new leak. Possibly because of the extra mushroom that we're allocating. Let's double check that, we have two leaks right now. We want just one, which is our centipede, which we don't actually delete. No, we're leaks one, all right. So, that's a bad idea because we're allocating a new mushroom now. Let's specifically just go through this list, so. For int row is equal to zero, row is less than the number of rows. Plus one? No, not needed. Column plus plus, row plus plus. Plushy tile to... The row is equal to no pointer? Is that okay? That doesn't seem right. We can try it though. Nine thirty-one is good. That's still no, but this does not change. And I feel like what we're hitting on that last row is twenty-nine thirty-two. I can almost feel it. What's weird is this is. God, I don't want to test it out again. I don't have to go all the way down. Um, we're gonna have to do it though, either way. Let's do it again. We're all the way down. In the meantime, I'm gonna troubleshoot what's going on here. So. A new mushroom, pointer to a pointer, number of rows. I thought I'm initializing to zero. Is it plus one here? Gotta go in a sec. It's halfway down. So 
something else I gotta implement is when it hits the wall to also switch rows. That would make things probably a lot faster. For uh, these tests, specifically. As long as the mushroom distribution is okay, we can fold out pretty fast. Except there's no mushrooms for it to fall down with now. Come on, RNG. Come on, RNG. There we go. Okay, so it still throws an error. I mean, I suppose this is where it should start looping back. No, it should be down here. It should absolutely rotate on that final row. Otherwise, the player could always avoid him, which is a bad idea. Hmm. But then again, a mushroom can never spawn down here, so we shouldn't even be checking for mushrooms. see if adding one here will uh, create a memory leak. If it does, we can see if we can combat the memory leak. Oh, now we get heap corruption. That's what I thought. Because this is not allowed. Because then we're sending null pointer to something that we should be sending null pointer to. How about when we do the check? in the mushroom field when we pass the position to the get mushroom method. Oh, yeah, the check we had before where I thought we didn't have to worry about it, we have to worry about it. Mushy tile to the column is equal to no pointer. Return no pointer. That might even resolve the problem in itself. Possibly. Let's see if we can get a lot of mushrooms down here. Trying to get it to fall best. The more fleas we have spawned, the luckier we get. Oh! <laughs> I forgot I can die to the flea! <laughs> That check. That null check. Okay. I'm gonna step away for half a second again. I'll be right back in just a moment. Thank you. 
Okay, I have returned. I'd usually be starting Reno 911 by now. I usually watch that right before I go to bed. Uh, where's my window? My test window. There it is. And camera. Hi. Cool. So we're still getting that no point error. Which is something I know I ran into in the past and I temporarily worked around where I was like, hey, the flea can't spawn in the last row, so don't check in the last row. Now it's a problem though. So now we actually need to figure out what's going on. Also, let's I made a lot of progress. Um, I gotta upload to our version control. Uh, making progress on centipede head movement. Running into a null pointer exception. Running into a read access violation on the last row when the centipede hits the bottom. Also, just so we have a much faster process for falling down, because that's been a problem lately, um, let's do it whenever we run into our bounds, we switch rows. Switch row. Yeah. Now it should fall faster. We haven't actually changed anything, I just want to make sure this looks okay. That's not right. Switching row, don't you change the direction? You do! Mm, oh, but it changes it again. Okay. Who is responsible for changing the direction? The row switcher? Or the move method? That's our problem. I think it should be the switch row. It should not be here. Because switching row is going to be a gradual thing. We only actually change the direction once we've actually fully moved downward. So, we'll leave that to the switch row method. And now it should continuously switch into the, into the end of the screen, hopefully. Yeah, okay, we're good. Um, I am noticing the offset's not quite right. We'll figure out what's going on there a little bit later. I think it's... Set scale being incorrect. Let's check that again. Now it should properly be facing the right direction. Yeah. So the reason why it's falling through the mushrooms and it's okay in our instance is because it's waiting 8 frames until it checks the next mushroom, so it's lagging essentially. Well, it's not really lagging, it's, it's not checking constantly. Which is okay for us, we're allowed to do that. However, I might want to get a, a smaller gap, which is something we're trying to work on anyway, it's just the detection radius. Cool. So we got to the bottom. Much faster too, may I note. Which is good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Uh, we're still having a problem oh, in the mushroom field with our rows. We can do another cheap check. <laughs> Let's maybe consider doing a cheap check um, where we just say, hey, only check the mushroom if the rows. This ah, that's terrible. It's only going to be in one instance. Do we ever actually have to run into them? Right, let's make sure. Do we have? I bet we are out of leaking memory again. No, we're not because we didn't increment. Yeah, we're not. Uh, we didn't increment the number of rows. How about we do? Can we do this? Where we set number of rows, number of rows plus one. Try that. Um, I'm gonna put a breakpoint. Well, that's good. And we're not leaking. I want to see if the value that we thought was causing the read access violation is good. No, it's not. Because I think it's going to be, for example, any mushy tile, like 6 for example, or 5, just somewhere in the middle of the screen, 32. And that's going to give us a read access violation. Because technically 32 shouldn't exist, it's a lower bound. 
31 shouldn't exist. 31, you know what actually? We might be okay now, because I think 31 is the highest it can go to. When it reaches 32, it shouldn't reach 32. 32 is technically below where the player is right now, which doesn't, it isn't really anywhere. Also our player needs to be moved, but we might be okay in this instance, we'll see. We might have resolved it. Just by adjusting the upper bounds. Hopefully. In the meantime, I'll play this thing. The Song of the Centipede. <laughs> Let's see. No! Damn it. I gotta know what it's passing. I gotta know. I just gotta know the row number. Because then we can just test, like, hey, is this row actually no pointer? Why is it giving us this error? But how to determine what that row is is gonna be a lot of fun. What we can do is say when we call. Uh, no, that won't work either. Console message uh, right line pss.x plus space I like this is it plus ps.y don't like it no string concatenation dot to string no two string method that's not a method Ugh. That's why I, like, I wish I could be using printf right now. Um, but printf does not work for this because it only provides one argument call, which is a string. And I don't know how to form a string C string right now to make this work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What I feel like is problematic is while we're running the game and we say we get to the very last mushroom, put a breakpoint. Maybe now that won't work. Ugh. I'm stuck on this one. So we're just gonna do the breakpoint method. That's all I can think of right now. Breakpoint, of course. However, oh, this way, is this method even getting hit? No! Why? Oh, because it's never hitting from the left. There we go. Oh, it also might be either of these instances. I didn't even think about that. Well, we got a breakpoint both of them. Could be the right one. It hit so fast! <laughs> I didn't even realize we were down, down there already. Uh, okay. Hmm. Da, 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 da. Hmm. way to do this. I want to break so I can see what the column information is at that point. So I can get the player position at that point. I almost want to create a dummy method so we can pass that information to the mushroom for some weird reason. We don't need to do that. We're gonna do that because there's no reason to do it at all. Whoa! Popo and Duck! Is it actually going to the screen? It's not! Wait, where's my event window? <laughs> Popo, thank you! What's going on? 24 of y'all, 24 of y'all beautiful people. How's it going, everyone? Hope everyone's doing well today. Hope you enjoyed that that Popo stream. We got a breakpoint. We got a uh, an exception that we keep running into. <laughs> right now we're trying to work on Centipede. We're trying to work on Centipede. Making the Centipede game. I'm pulling an all-nighter tonight because I've been behind on the game. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on, Popo? 
What's going on, Sink? How you doing, sir? Sir and or ma'am. Can't assume. Um, <laughs> hope you're all doing well. Nothing too scary tonight. Have you had any other um, very loud noises? Anyone fall from the upstairs? Any any loud dogs knock anything over, Mr. Popo? Wait, Sparky, you aren't supposed to corrupt your own code. Do you want me to? Because that's something we can absolutely do. You know what? I could use a small break. Let's corrupt our code. Why not? Because that's something we can actually do now. Um, so I'm gonna take off Senti Boy. And we're just gonna bring everything else in here. They've been loud all night? Oh, that's insane. I don't know if... I feel like that would annoy me after a little while. At least it's not, like, it's not going to the stream very often. I think I only heard it, like, once, where it actually tripped the noise gate. But outside of that, I wasn't really hearing it all that much. Um, so it's only for you. It's only to drive you crazy in the end. Maybe it's all in your head at this point. It might just be, uh... <laughs> it might just be, um, noises going off in your mind. <laughs> Alright, so real quick, I'm going to run the code, and what we're going to corrupt is the main window. Using our corruption tools, I gotta grab that. Maybe this whole Twitch, <laughs> maybe this whole Twitch thing is in my head? Maybe! Maybe indeed! How do we know? We don't know. That's, that's the trick. That's how they get you. <laughs> Where's my corruption and stuff? Um, this is all a simulated game. Exactly! It's all a simulation. Which is horrifying. <laughs> oh, where's my corruption thing? RTC, there we go. We're just gonna let the game run, it's fine. Wake up, Neo! <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? I need to get my tools to run. But I can't get it to run right now. Which is no fun. No bueno. Which I wanted. Here, wait. I had to download a couple other launchers. That's. Oh, no, yeah, it's a run. Okay. Now I need to hook into this process and keep my fingers crossed so we can actually craft it properly. We can now hook into processes that are running, which is fantastic because then we can corrupt fun stuff like window processes and stuff like that. Um, specifically, I'm going to target the window and corrupt it with the vector engine. And we're gonna blast it with a little bit of intensity and see if we get lucky. Actually, just the graphics window. Ooh! There we go! There's a little bit of something. We got some red bars. <laughs> some huge mushrooms. Impromptu corruption stream, I guess. <laughs> We're gonna keep blasting it a couple times. Also, big flash warning, yeah, big old... What do you call that? Big old seizure warning, graphic warning, loud sound warning, if you're sensitive to any of that kind of stuff. We might have some some big splashes here, some big corruptions here. Some, some flashing lights, so be cautious of that. Smooshed on that first one, big pixels, look at that! All super smooshed into that, that tiny little corner. I love this huge one. We can probably, if we can get it just right, we might be able to play it. Can we play it like this? We can try. Nope, I can't even see where I am, actually. Oh, we're dead! That's right, I forgot we died. Okay, Sparks, I'm gonna grab some food, I'll be lurking. I take care, Mr. Popo. Thank you for that host, by the way. Enjoy the food. I hope you get some good food in ya. <laughs> is that music from DK? It is, from Donkey Kong Country 3. I've listened to the Donkey Kong Country 1 soundtrack, Ad Infinium. <laughs> So many times, so I wanted to listen to the third one for a chance, for a change. Um, so that's what we're listening to now. Hope you like it. What's going on, regular guys? Show, welcome, welcome, and to Missy Pickles, welcome to both of you. I've been loving Popos. I can't be able to stop by for his early streams now, which I've never been able to do now, or to do in the past. And now I can see. Um, usually he'll start off with, like Castlevania and Marble Madness. And like Super Mario Bros, which, oh my god, Marble Madness. He is insane at Marble Madness. I don't know, he probably. Woo! I don't have any notification. What was that? I gotta get my notifications working. Weird, that didn't actually come up on my uh, notification thing here. Um, do you want to discard your changes? I guess I do. 
That's a weird message. The warm-up games. He's so good at the warm-up games, though. Um, what was that activity feed? Phone dub! Thank you for the follow. It didn't come to my chat window, which is weird. I guess they don't go there anymore. But thank you for the follow, photo. Uh, the warm-up games. Marble Madness! I couldn't believe he got such a good score today! I think he got his personal best, um, which was phenomenal. Couldn't believe how good that was. Um, I'm still trying to get good at Marble Madness. I don't play it as often as he does, but still. That was me! Thank you, photo. <laughs> I appreciate the follow. Oh, well, there's one of my windows. Why is this popping up now? I swear, I recently switched to a new computer. I got a new PC. 127,000, that was it. I just couldn't believe the number. I don't even think... I might have beaten it once in the past, but that was a long time ago. Alright, here's where we're going to try to get working. Is my notification box. Alert box, which is hidden right now. Show the alert box. Now that should work properly. Cool. <laughs> Thank you once again for the follow. But yeah, phenomenal. Phenomenal to see that high score. Okay, so here's all the fun graphics. I'm going to move this over so at least I can see it better. These are still dropping, which is nice. I think we can really only mess with the graphics. We can try, start trying to corrupt, like, say, the executable. Oh, look at that really tiny screen. Um... But I think we're gonna run into like an error the first second we do that. We're actually gonna see the error we create too, which will be kind of interesting. Um, we can't do the audio right now because we don't have any audio, and I can't crop the windows specifically because that doesn't seem to do anything. Um, we could do SML SFML system, so the sound system itself. So you're coding set to P from scratch. I am. Um, I was provided with say sprites and sound and a background game engine. So, SFML and Teal, which is the game engine, um, which is as... <laughs> and this is actually for a class, so specifically the professor says the game engine is terrible. He coded himself and he knows it's just dreadful. But, it um, mostly just hides away stuff like, you know, setting colli collisions and colliders and stuff like that. It's just a function call and it deals with all that stuff in the background. I don't have to actually have to deal with that specifically. Um, or like, say, the, the sprite cutting. Spark heading I don't have to worry about, I can just specify like how many columns and rows and it does it for me. Which is great. Um, the actual logic of the game and say like, you know, these mushrooms specifically, once we can actually see some mushrooms because we've corrupted it all. Um, putting them within a matrix, a 2D array actually in this implementation, having a bunch of references. Um, the implementation of say that flea that just dropped down, when they drop down, how they are implemented in terms of like health, sprite, cycles, and stuff like that, that's all implemented by me. Um, Scorpion, and when he spawns, how he poisons the mushrooms. That's all from scratch. Um, it's mostly an exercise in um, having just a large code base. Because up to this point, I've had very you know small files working with, say, data structures and stuff like that. Um, this one's my first like full-fledged big project where I'm upwards. I think I'm on my like, 9,000th line of code, um, I think, last time I checked. There's a nice little PowerShell script you can run to see how many lines you've run or blinds you've coded. Um, oh, that's really tiny, look at that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so it's working with a big project. Centipede Maker, you got it, yeah, exactly, Centipede Maker. <laughs> anyway, now we're gonna corrupt just the executable file, which I imagine uh, we're gonna immediately run into an error. I'm gonna try to do a small intensity. Of just like 63 bytes we're gonna corrupt. There's an exception. We ran into a no pointer error on the window draw. Ooh, that's exciting. What did it actually run into an error with? Let's check the call stack. So it's trying to run to a target. So it's something I called draw on. I don't know what actually ran into an error here. Let me try that one more time. I want to get an error, but I want to see what... Before, I was running into errors where it was specifically like... I tried sending a value of 10 billion to the to the game, but it couldn't handle it because I wasn't using big integers or anything like that. Um, so it crashed. And those are fun ones. So let's do just centipede executable. This one was one that was trying to assign. We got a read access violation. That's interesting. Uh. Da -da -da. Unable to read in memory. So that's for the previous frame. So it lost a reference to what the previous frame was? 
it was trying to find what the previous frame was and whatever like pointer to it or something like that, I think we broke that that reference or that pointer or whatever it was storing, then it's gone. And it's unable to read the memory location because it's no longer available. That's neat. <laughs> anyway, fun stuff like that. I love corrupting stuff. It's so fun. Most of what our channel is, um, is corrupting uh, games like Atari and NES, NES. <laughs> <laughs> People in attack me for saying NES, NES, and uh, old school games. Upwards of like GameCube. We've also done Wii U stuff, and uh, we have done Switch yet. The Switch is sometime in the future, probably. PS2 and stuff like that. Um, but I'm coding lately because schools keep me busy. <laughs> anyway, that is all for the corruption. So hope you enjoyed that little mini segment. We're getting back to coding. Uh, what we were currently working on. Oh, we kept running into, so before the, the raid, also thank you again, Popo, if you're lurking around. Um, specifically, the problem that we're running into is we have this giant grid, this 2D array of all these positions where we're allocating these mushrooms, we're sending it to no pointer if there's no mushroom there. Uh, the very last row, which is an outlier, the 32nd row, is throwing a read access violation. And I'm trying to figure out specifically what column and row combination is throwing that read access violation. We're getting that anytime the centipede head zigzags its way all the way to the bottom screen. Um, I'm having a trouble referencing that though, because specifically, we have a check within the field to make sure that the mushroom that we're referencing actually exists, or there's something within the memory location that we're looking at currently. Um, whether that's a mushroom or that's garbage data is the, actually the issue we're running into. In this instance, it's garbage data. Uh, because it's something that we did not allocate, and it's actually, I think, just the heap header. Uh, because we're right outside the bounds. So, it says, okay, good to go. There's a mushroom there, or there's something there. Um, continue with the next code line, and in this instance we say, okay, at that location, check if that mushroom's poison. Well, it's like, well, that's not a mushroom. We're referencing nothing at all. We can't check that the heap header is poison. That doesn't make sense. Um, that's where we're running into the read access violation. We're trying to read a piece of memory and call a function upon it that does not actually do anything. It runs into read access violation. Um, and it has to do with how we allocated that original array, I believe. Now, if I knew the exact column and row combination that was throwing this error, then we'd be able to uh, troubleshoot a little bit further. At least when we actually create the initial array, we can see if that specific piece of memory was allocated, what's there currently, can we set it to be null pointer, at least so for the time being we can kind of work around it. That's my debacle at the moment, my, my problem. Um, the second problem is actually trying to get that row column combination because we need a little set of uh, breakpoint right before it breaks because it's constantly checking, you know, is this a mushroom, is this a mushroom, is this a mushroom? So many times per, uh, per frame, we run into uh, trouble when it gets all the way down at the bottom. Um, a small workaround I was going to try, which I don't know if it would still work, is in the... We could do a temporary new method called isPoison. Actually, it doesn't even be a temporary method. You know what we can do? We can pass, for some odd reason, this isn't going to make sense and we have to remove it immediately, but we can do bull is poison, and we're going to pass over our, um, our position information, so vector 2f pos. Is this useful to the mushroom? No. Is it a waste of passing around memory for no apparent reason? Absolutely. But it helps us debug it because we just can't get this information otherwise. So it's going to do the exact same thing as this previous method. But now when we're actually in this method, we have a reference to that thing that we passed to it, being the position. And we don't really need to do anything with it. I don't think that will be compiled out. It will still be an argument. So, that's it. And it will still function the same, so we can actually still just utilize this as a, uh, a function call that still checks everything, in which case we're passing just our POS. And I think that's all we need. So now when it actually breaks, when it crashes, we're going to be inside the mushroom call, but we're going to be inside the special mushroom call where that argument is problematic. Where that, um, where that, that call to the memory location is problematic. It can't see if it's poison or not. It should have that as an argument that we can check. I think. <laughs> I hope. That's what I hope happens. I don't know if it will be. Um, before we do that, though, we're going to take out the scorpion and spider factory.
and remove their spawners and remove their termination because we just don't need them around at the moment. Otherwise they just get in the way kind of. Um, we do need the flea though for two reasons. If we want more mushrooms to spawn on the very bottom rail, we're gonna need the flea to spawn downwards. What are we missing? We're missing the centipede. We want to spawn more mushrooms. It'll make them fall faster, which is all we really need. That's weirder. Might have been out of the ordinary? No, what's up with that? Uh, we might have turned off the wrong thing. Mushroom factory's good to do. Good to go. Scorpion spider. That's good to go. Huh. Mushroom flea bullet. Centipede. Weird. I don't know what's up with that air. Let's see what calls it. We'll go up the call stack. Oh, it's here again. We didn't change anything about this method, though. This method's exactly the same. Right. Right? Do we set it improperly? What's, what's the locals? So it's having a trouble with pos.x? No, column. Throw axis violation. Yeah. Just to double check all of our variables. POS.x. That's a valid value. Tile size. Able to read memory. Do we turn off tile size? Tile size is right here though. Very strange. Maybe it doesn't have a reference to the uh, mushy tile? It doesn't! Oh! Why doesn't it have a reference to that? Which should be assigned in the uh, set field method. Set field, set boy. Does that probably get set? Uh, so this should properly set here. I'm just gonna step through it. Set the field to be true. What is field currently? I think we just missed it. No, nope. field is set. Weird. Uh, mushroom, mushroom field, get mushroom. Method is the same, column, row. We didn't change anything here, I don't believe. Right? We did, didn't we? Did we change the wrong method? No, we said it is poison method. That doesn't change anything. Uh, weird. Okay, just so weird. Double check. <laughs> to return back to a state that we were at before. Um, removing this is poison method, which is I think the only thing we actually changed. I believe. Yeah, the wrong. Uh, project file. Move these guys for just a sec. Weird! I don't know what's up with that. Well, put my background around. Put this back in the center. Uh, don't know what's up with that. It's almost like as if we don't set the field properly, which I know we do. Uh, here's another test. So let's put a breakpoint specifically in the call stack when we check that position. Okay, so here we are. Now, do you have an, a reference to the field? You do, but it hasn't been set properly. Why? Has it not been set properly? Who did not set the field? 
set field method sounds like it didn't get called properly. Frankie, it was getting to the bottom of the screen. I remember that. Uh, create a new set of beat head, and at that set of beat head, we set a field. In which case, the field that we pass is equal to the new field. Yeah, that seems proper. It's not like we create a new field after the fact. I just want to double check it. I'm going absolutely bonkers. like this isn't in the right namespace, but it is. Okay, here's another test. When we call the move method, <laughs> do we have the field reference then? No? We should have it. Oh, I guess we haven't actually said it yet. <laughs> I'm like, at this point we should absolutely have it. We don't. What centipede head are we updating? Which level one is this? Okay, yeah, testing within here. Stepping through this. Player one field was allocated properly. It's a mushroom field. Set the field. Field is now proper value of this. Now it checks out. Stepping through, collision pairs, process of frame. And it's gone. Why is that? What other values should Centipede have that we should double check? Um, it should also have, like, for example, frame checker. Frame checker. Which is a value that's set. Um, feel is a pointer. That should be. That's good. That's what we want. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on here. As a sanity check, I'm gonna back out of this area. Centipede dead. At that centipede dead, call a function called set field. The field that we pass as a parameter is the player one field. This is the only centipede head on the screen. Why would that lose its reference to the field? That doesn't make sense. Unless the field get deleted, which I don't believe happened, right? We can go back to our mushroom field and make sure that it doesn't actually get deleted when we nullify it. Null it out. But it looks like it has nothing. Odd. Okay. Mushroom field. Let me actually nullify this. Here. As a test. Try removing the nullification of it. No, it's still missing the reference. Okay. Mushroom field. Outside of that, got the is poison method. Which you can say the same. I'm going absolutely crazy. I don't know. 
you know, as a test, I mean, we were corrupting this instance, so maybe let's delete it? That might be. <laughs> it wouldn't be great if it was something that was as a result of that corruption. Um, specifically, centipede solution. I would love that. Only because it also means that we don't have to change anything. It means we didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> other than corrupting our game. <clears throat> ah, so that's a, a bad reference. I don't know what's going on with that. That really is throwing me for a turn, for a twist. I... <laughs> Which is almost too bad that we haven't been using our version control so much today. set up the level. It's once we start running the level that actually runs into some trouble. Oh! Wait. I think that did it. Because I had, stupidly, <laughs> enabled a centipede head, a second one on the screen. Um, Let's see if that changes things. Yeah, now we have proper field reference. <laughs> Why would that such caught such a disaster? So we had two centipedes items on the screen in the same position. I don't know why one would nullify the other. Anyways, well great, that works now. Um, what were we working on before we had this weird error? Uh, we are now passing the proper reference. Okay, great. So continue along, get to the end. It's gonna hit the final mushroom. It's gonna pass the reference to that to the the mushroom, and then we can actually figure out what wrong column we're actually running to this error. With. <laughs> Such a silly error. Uh, a silly one that escaped me. Cool. Now we wait for it to hit the bottom. I guess we could have been shooting fleas in the meantime, but we're shooting four fleas. You know what? Shoot and fleas, why not? Fleas shoot. Oh no, I removed the last mushroom that I needed. There we go. Now we can see the magical error as it hits. Oh, that's right, it doesn't even need to hit a mushroom. Uh, but, oh, that's right, I forgot to pass the, the position. Because we had temporarily removed that method. Pass the position, do it again. If we could increase the speed, we would, but unfortunately, I don't think we can. Well, we could now, because now we actually bound check. So when we hit the left or right side, we actually switch down a rail, but... It's fine. For the time being. Let's get the fleet to drop. The only problematic part is how long it takes to just fall. And error. Passing the POS. Hey! What's that position? Wait, then I go read memory. Oh, because it's not the right. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, wait a moment. Excuse me. That's an argument. We should be able to read that. We passed it, after all. There's our position. There's our magic number, everybody. Now. Now we can use that magic number to do some checking. So, first off, in order to calculate where we are in the mushroom field, we use a formula. Not really a formula. This one here. So when we call get mushroom, we specifically return this value, which is pos.x. Let me just write this down just so I have a reference of it. So 42488 is the magic number that is killing us. And now what we're going to do instead is actually stop the gameplay, because we know where it breaks. We're going to go back to when we first generated the mushroom field, and we're going to put a breakpoint here, and now check that position manually. So now in order to check it, uh, we called get mushroom with the column and row numbers. Uh, column is going to be equal to the position.x divided by the tile size. Know what POSX is yet, though, which is okay. 
Um, in this instance, we actually just need to get into the mushroom field first. So let's get here. Yeah. POSX divided by tile size. But POSX we have, it's 42. So, 42 divided by the tile size. And the integer of that. So, cast it to an integer, which is going to be 2.2. It's just gonna be two. Yeah. Because you fall off the rest of the, uh... The rest of the, uh, um, decimals. Integer of 488. <clears throat> by tile size. 30! Is not the number I expected. That's not the number I expected. Weird. Okay, so 230 is the value that threw the error. 30 I thought was no pointer. Okay. Well, let's back out of here again. And we're going back to populate. And now we're going to double check. Mushy tile. To the 230, which should be apparently a problematic one. That's the error we're looking for, okay. So this is the exact error that we get. Wherever that is. What is that on screen? <laughs> it's over there. This is the error that we get when we actually try to reference that, that location. Which makes sense, it's outside of our range. Um, so... I switched these two, which is a really bad idea. I think we're supposed to start with the number of columns. Which, let's not even worry about plus ones right now. And then number of rows. soundtrack. Call and call. Okay. Might throw a whole bunch of errors. It's okay. Didn't throw a single error. Okay. Balance checking is okay. Okay. Did we end up switching those? Because for some reason in my mind, I needed to start with rows and then columns, as opposed to columns and then rows? Maybe. Maybe that's why I ran into a bunch of errors. <laughs> How did I switch those two in my mind? Well, we're gonna see if we get an error while we get to the bottom here. Uh, let's switch over to the Stardew Valley soundtrack. Because I would like to listen to some Stardew. Oh, we still got an error, though. Damn. Well, we got a position again, which is good. At least we have another reference. Uh, am I loud? I don't look loud. No, the game's loud, or the music's loud. Let me turn that down slightly. Sorry about that. And that looks better, I think. It's weird because I have a bigger monitor, so now I can't gauge whether that's too loud or not. Hopefully it's good enough. I'm sorry if it's too loud. Let me know. Studio. Here we go. And what's our POS? 488 again. Which is row 30. It's the one we thought was wrong. Okay, back to populate. I would have loved that with the solution. Then it made me very happy. <laughs> so we can still get the same error, right? Yeah. 532, we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Now, how do we try the, the, the extra checking? So plus one, plus one. And number of columns, plus one, plus one. Which hopefully will not lead to a memory leak. I don't think it will. It did. 
Or he ran into a heat corruption. Um, let's stop it on... We don't need the number of columns, necessarily. I'm hoping we can do a number of rows, because I think that's where we're running into the trouble. Nope. Didn't like that. Okay. Because we already know it's... Column row. It's column row. So the number of columns should be 30, that's correct. Let me quickly populate again. I wish I can illustrate my, my grid being created, knowing how it looks, <laughs> essentially. Um, <coughs> which we can kind of do with balance checking. So mushy dial. Right now, 29, 0 should be a value. Mushy tile. 29, 0 should be a value. Good. 29, 30 should be a value. Good. 29, 31 should be a value. Good. And 29, 32, I don't think should be a value. It's not. But that's okay. Wait, 230 is okay now. 230 throws no. Which is good. Because we want no there. Let's. Did we change anything? We didn't change a thing. Okay, let's see if it runs down at the bottom. Get him, get away. <laughs> I wish I could corrupt it while it's waiting, but unfortunately, we actually got to see the result before it happens when we get down there. Speed up the process. I'll hit these guys down. Oh! Perfect. Cool. I don't even think I noticed that last time that it got to the bottom row and it tried to keep going, which it shouldn't be doing. So we got to the bottom row. Perfect. That's exactly, exactly what we were looking for. So our columns and rows were switched. That's, that's what was going on. Essentially what we were doing is we were creating... How many was that? So that was 32 columns by... So it's a rectangle instead of uh, Let me get a paint window. Yeah, let's just do this. Real quick on screen. Done the window capture. It should be paint.net. Oh, god, it's huge. Ba -ba. Get these bounds. Let's stop the game real quick. So essentially what was going on that I did not account for <laughs> was... Instead of being the window that we see right now, so this big square rectangle, it was going longwise, so essentially, it was this instead of this. This is absolutely exaggerated, but it was 32 by 30 instead of 30 by 32. Oh, no, I've just messed everything up. <laughs> Anyways, so that made sense that why whenever I went down to the bottom here, to the bottom here, I was running into all kinds of weird errors. It also makes sense why, even though I would sometimes check on the outside of this this corner, it would be okay. I wouldn't run into like read access violations when I thought I should. And that was not during the stream, but that was just during other testing. Um, now, however, this row is created, all these rows are created, which is fantastic. And what if we actually ran into an error now was when we specifically tried to access right here which we're not allowed to access. So, perfect! That's exactly the functionality we're looking for. And we can move on. We can actually move on, if you can believe it or not. So let's do that. 
we're making okay progress so far. I didn't expect to get stuck on that for so long, but oh my god, did that save our issues down the road. Jesus. So now, what do we do now? We were stuck on this problem for so long. We need to work on poison moving, and we need to work on... What else do we need to work on? Uh, poison moving and... Oh, when we get to the very bottom, we gotta go back up. So now I'm wondering, almost 11. Do you like call the string here? Be behind on homework. Because technically I'm gonna be behind on like my my math homework by about a day. I think I can I think I can do it. If I like do math homework, I've been so behind on math homework too, so I've been doing the weekend is just coding. Where um excuse me. Friday, Saturday, Sunday I do nothing but straight coding the entire day. Um try to get as much I try to get the sprint done within those three days, which I can sometimes do. Currently, you can see I'm behind very much. Um, and then, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which are the remaining three days I have a week, do my math homework, and then on Thursday I have both classes in quick succession. So, I'm pushing things to the limit, but I think I'm actually going to be able to sleep tonight. God forbid. <laughs> Tomorrow, I need to get the rest of this finished, which I think I'm in a pretty good place. So we have the movement going down. I might even stream it if I get a chance to. Um, I'm worried about streaming it, though, because if I'm... Not talking. So if I would have just like figured this out in my head, I probably would have found that problem and quickly moved on. It might have been able to finish it tonight. Possibly, maybe not. Um, I'll see. Possibly if I if I know I can stream it and finish it at the same time, then we're good. It depends on how much like looking up stuff I have to do. If I have to do a bunch of like outside references, I don't want to just be like staring at web pages when I'm not talking. Um, it's not too interesting. But we're in a pretty good position, so we got it moving down properly. We got it detecting mushrooms. I think what I'm going to work on tomorrow is getting to where it actually rotates properly. We actually get some rotation on the, the sprites, in which case we can use the rotate method. Um, I do need to implement the poison mushroom, and I need to implement when it actually hits the bottom grid. Let me actually add this to my to-do list so I can read that while I'm going through it. By the way, to-do list. If you guys don't have a to-do list, oh my god, are they godsends. They're so helpful. So I got movement down. I don't have saving moving to the array. I don't have a factory for this yet. I do need to figure that out. Figure out offset problem, I'm still going to leave that on my to-do list because I'm still not entirely sure what's going on there. But, things to implement now. When flea, or not when flea, when centipede head reaches the bottom of the room, the floor, the roof. Oh, I can program at work, I just forgot about that. Sometimes I have trouble coding at work because I can't focus, but I can program at work. Um, as long as I remember to push my code. When the centipede reaches the bottom of the floor, look back. We probably just have a boolean check for that, because once it's in that bottom row, it just keeps looping back and forth, back and forth, repeatedly, so we're going to go on that. Um, poison mushroom state. Rotation. Those are the three big things I need to implement and finish by Wednesday at midnight. Which, I need to be finished with it by tomorrow, because I have my math up and catch up on. The fun thing about school is just those deadlines. It's mostly working the full-time job because I, most of the day I'm at, uh, I'm at work, so I don't have time to say code during the day uh, when normally people would be able to. But I am taking two less classes, so I guess I can balance this out. Anyways, I think that's it for me tonight. I think that's all the time I have this evening. I want to get something to eat, watch an episode of Reno 911, and fall asleep. And the Stardew Valley music is helping excellently. Um, I want to find someone to host here in just a sec. But, before I do, let me say a big old thank you to... Ooh, my windows are all gonna mess up. To Fodub, who was from Popo's stream. I saw Fodub lurking around in Popo's. I gotta say hello next time I see ya. And to Popo and Duck for the huge raid of 24 viewers. Very kind of you, Popo. I hope you, wherever you may be, you have delicious food. He's been having, I think he's still working on his plant-based diet, which is so cool. I love that. I try to, when I go back to California, I usually live on like a plant-based diet myself. Um, but I've not been doing that here in Chicago. I've been eating awful, awful food when I'm here. Like, noodles almost daily. Because, well actually now I've been eating a lot better. But usually, 
if I'm like trying to save money, which I'm not doing currently, I'm spending money, which is bad. <laughs> but I'm trying to save money, I'm doing like noodles daily. Right now I'm eating like chicken sandwiches and stuff like that. Bad. Awful food. I'm um, not working out or anything like that. Gotta, gotta get it together, but I don't have time to do it, unfortunately. Anyway, <laughs> enough of me blabbing around. Um, I don't have a Discord link in my chatbot. I have a brand new PC, so I actually don't have all my chatbots set up currently. What I do have, and I actually forgot to do it, is the shoutout. I have a shoutout for Pumpful and Duck, but I forgot to do the shoutout button. Um, but if you're curious, I have a community Discord I help run. Um, there's four. Myself, Slimy Baloney, Bullshit Plays, Wasabi Tonic. Am I forgetting anyone? I hope I'm not forgetting anyone. We have, I think, four team members. Oh god, no, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, Minister Falcor! Oh, Minister Falcor. It doesn't stream currently, but Minister Falcor as well. We have five team members. <laughs> he hasn't streamed in over, like, three months, so it's not my bad. <laughs> Sorry, Minister Falcor, if you're listening to me. Um, but we all stream odd games. It's called Odd Brew. Go check us out over there. They're all fantastic streamers, and I highly recommend all of them. Um, there's a link down below in my panels, if you're um, I also think I have a YouTube down there and a Twitter, but I don't use Twitter. But my YouTube's all my VOD dumps. And I think that is all I have to offer today. We're gonna find a host. So let me switch screens here while I do that. Bottom of my face in the meantime. Um, usually, so not currently, not during this weird middle time of the year. But usually we uh, stream Corruptions, and that's my primary channel stream <laughs> focus. Uh, but currently I'm not doing it, unfortunately. See you, Texport! See you, regular guy show! Thank you for hanging out. It's always good to see you, sir. Hope you're doing excellent. Um, I hope I do get to stream sometime soon. Um, we'll see, depending on what my schedule looks like. Um, I got my fingers crossed, though. Uh, we're gonna host Mr. Pumpkin Pirate, who's... He's an excellent streamer. He's in uh, Retro currently, playing a little bit of Mario Kart. Be sure to say hello. Uh, I think that's all I got. I hope you all have a wonderful Monday morning. No, oh, it's a Monday. <laughs> and I'll see you all later. Take care and have a great one.